Welcome to the final episode of Series 49, everyone. Uh, we've made it. We survived the actual game mechanic somehow. In this episode, we just get to have a little therapy session about it because we deserve it. It's, I mean, it's important to, like, unwind and, you know, to have that, like, kind of cool down session afterwards. Check in with everybody. How you doing? Was this traumatic for you? Yes, yep. it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, this, uh, is the, this is the importance of, you know, talking about bleed and... <laughs> <laughs> There's not supposed to be bleed with character creation. Right, yeah. Well, you know, sometimes. <laughs> At least character creation mechanics. Right, right. But right. We found a way. It's fine. Uh, where there's a will. Mm hmm. <laughs> there's the ability to survive Marvel. <laughs> exactly. We are collecting questions for a kind of belated anniversary QA. Uh, if you've ever had anything you want to ask us about, um, about how we make the show, if you have questions about specific characters we've created, or if you want our advice on something happening in your own game or with your own character, now is a great time to ask us. Put me on the spot. Ask me to name your character for you. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you can submit the questions through our form, which you can find at questions.charactercreationcast.com. Um, but we can't make an episode if you don't give us questions. So please send them in. Absolutely. Uh, I'm really looking forward to, to answering some of the questions that are already coming in. So mm -hmm. um, get yours in too, because uh, goodness, it's it's going to be a fun pile to, to sort through. Please. Yeah. I mean, we really want to read them and we like answering them. And, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be serious. It's okay. It, I'd say about... 70% of the questions are probably are not, not serious. serious. Like, I think a solid 25% of them are let's be mean to Amelia. Uh -huh. So, um, what yeah. are friends for? It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but yes, please send them in. Um, you know, if you've ever thought like, well, they don't really want to answer my question. Like, yes, we do. We do. Yes, we do. We do. Absolutely. We do. I love telling people things. Like, I, I love when people are like, what should I do? And I'm like, let me tell you about that. Yeah. So, I mean, nothing would make me happier. There you go. Uh, so, so make Amelia happy and, and myself as well, because I, 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 I like seeing people happy. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of, uh, Yazeba's Bed and Breakfast is still funding on Indiegogo for a little while longer. Uh, we mentioned last time that they are working on stretch goals uh, to fund a Haith grant, which helps new designers, writers and artists break into the industry. Uh, it's really an awesome goal and a really, really great game. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a link to the project in our show notes if you haven't checked it out yet. Yes, please. It looks, it just looks gorgeous. Like every Absolutely. time I see more, like it, an ad for it popped up on my Facebook recently that had like a little video and everything. I was like, this oh, is yeah. so good. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. And that book is going to be ginormous and I know. beautiful. I know. I'm really oh. excited. The art is gorgeous too. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, Podchaser is doing their Reviews for Good campaign for the month of April. Mm -hmm. If you leave a review for a podcast on Podchaser this month, they'll donate 25 cents toward World Central Kitchen, which is helping to feed families in Ukraine. So mm -hmm. It's a very good cause. Um, if podcasters reply to your review, they'll double that amount. So if you haven't left us a review yet... Or if you left a review on a different platform, but not on Podchaser, now would be an awesome time to do that. Mm -hmm. um, we will still read it on the show, even if you left one somewhere else and you put one on Podchaser now. We Absolutely. Will, we will read your review. So now's your chance, people. Yeah, you can do it. In. And you can in. support charity. Yes. Even if you don't care about Ryan and I, like if you don't <laughs> care about our feelings and the fact that it makes us happy, at least you could feed some people. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and if you throw five stars our way in the, in the meantime, you know, yeah. we, we won't be sad about that. No. Well, uh, that's it for announcements. Uh, we actually kept it pretty short this week, surprisingly. We did. Look at uh, us being on task. I know. We're both like kind of tired today. So we are a little, it's uh, a little less silly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, but that's okay. Uh, you know, you can join us after the episode for a call to action um, and a uh, uh, bonus outtakes. Mm -hmm. There's a few of them. A uh, couple. <laughs> so uh, stick around for that. But until then, enjoy the show.
welcome back to our discussion episode. Last time, we finished our session zero for Marvel superheroes. I think mostly. Ryan, did you finish? Maybe. I... <laughs> <laughs> This episode, we are going to discuss this character creation process. Uh, we are thrilled to welcome back Jeff and John from System Mastery. Hello. Would you like to reintroduce yourselves? Tell everybody about the characters you made. <laughs> you go first. <laughs> Hi, I'm I'm John. Uh-huh. I, uh, I made a character and it's great and I love him. Mm -hmm. Dearly, sweet boy. Sweet, sweet Godfrey. Godfrey. Sweet Godfrey Halloween, the <laughs> god of Halloween. Yep. <laughs> yep. A.K.A. the Treat Ranger. The Treat Ranger, the god of Halloween, Godfrey Halloween, a, a man out of time. <laughs> a, a man a just in time. <laughs> a teenager, a god. A god-ager. A god-ager. A guy with only king-size candy bars. <laughs> Give out all the love and all the candy. Yep. And I made, I made the Trick Ranger, Roger Mortis, uh, a, a Frankenstein who summons zombies and wrestles. And uh, he was also, it was, he, oh, he's completely invincible. It's like, it's like a completely impossible to hurt him, except emotionally. <laughs> oh, well, because he's a teenager, he's, so. Yeah, he's got yeah. psychological problems, and he hates religion because oh. he's an upstart, rebellious teenager and not because he's an undead monster. Wow. Right, mm -hmm. for sure. Definitely for sure. not. Ryan, why don't you tell us about your character? Oh, Lord, character. Oh, goodness. This is probably <laughs> the first character that I haven't really liked. But you know what? Okay. Nope. I, I'm and whose fault is that? Optimistic. Yeah. I know. I, I, I just figured out exactly what this character is all about. <laughs> and I'm very excited to play it now. Okay. I made Chase Spectrum. Chase is spelt with a C. Uh, two C's, technically. Um. Mm -hmm. And they are also known as the costume ranger when they transform um, because they can don multiple costumes um, and they are a changeling. So that means they've got five, count them, five different physical forms that they can turn into. Um, and that's where they got their first name from, Chase. Uh, so it is a cyborg uh, with uh, replacement limbs and, and organs, uh, a humanoid robot a uh, altered chemistry uh, type individual, uh, another cyborg, but this time an exoskeleton and an ethereal form, which is a ghost. And uh, they've got all, they've got all sorts of different uh, hodgepodge of powers because of course, and uh, their, their biggest weakness is uh, energy depletion. So they become incapacitated uh, from continuous contact with uh with with energy depletion stuff, <laughs> you were supposed to just you were just supposed to choose a type of energy. Oh, were you? Yeah, you're just supposed to be like on contact with fire or something. His power in your case, because you're all robot-y, I would suggest like you know an electrical field or extreme heat or cold. Oh, it's got to be something ridiculous though, right? Yeah, it probably should be like the dust from the. But isn't, isn't it in yeah. energy depletion depleting energy from me or something like that? Uh, oh, you, you know what? I think energy depletion is the one where you can just run out of power. Okay. Yeah. So it's like my batteries run out, basically. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes. So if my batteries get get uh, discharged enough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you have a finite energy supply. I become yeah. incapacitated something for Something to re-up. Re and it's a big hopper strapped to your back that's full of pixie sticks that shakes out the powder and keeps you moving. With. There you go. Eventually you run out of pixie sticks. I'm gonna Unless say the Street I'm, Ranger. I'm gonna say it's like a like an EMP, like an electromagnetic oh, pulse will just knock me out as long as that pulse is going. But as soon as it turns off, then I'm I'm good. I'm back to normal. Cool. Otherwise, I'm just on the ground, even if I'm a ghost. So <laughs> yeah, uh, that was my fun character, uh, Amelia. How about yourself? Uh, well, I made a robot that definitely doesn't look human at all. Um, in fact, I look like a giant spider, um, which is why my name is SP1D3R, uh, or the Spider Ranger. Um, I have, like, the worst, lamest powers ever. Uh, <laughs> ma <laughs> magic transferal, so I can transfer my powers to other people. Um, <laughs> I have, uh, disintegration, but I'm not very good at it. Uh, oh, that's a great album. Yeah, it's <laughs> best cure album. So, 
And yeah, then, I have uh, disintegration and I can loan it to people. Here you go, listen to this. <laughs> that is very yes, high school. Exactly, that's what it is, right? Um, <laughs> uh, and webcasting, which obviously is probably a cable access show of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am excited about the, the webcasting in my, in my spider form. Uh, my weakness is an energy allergy. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just, I really need help deciding what kind of energy this allergy is. Negative and negative. Yeah, it's it's people who aren't into Halloween. Yeah. Oh, I, can't, I yeah. can't deal with your negative energy. Yeah, I can't right deal now. with your terrible vibes <laughs> right just, now. Just, <laughs> yeah, your you robotic get, form of sneeze. Bad vibes. You get, you get really sick and weak if anyone gives you like a chick tract instead of candy. Yep. Yeah. You're like trick or treat, and they're like, here's a handful of pennies in a, in a book about the dangers of Dungeons and Dragons. Ooh. <laughs> and you're like, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, and it says it, it, it incapacitates me. So, yeah. Um, oh, I didn't mention my weakness. Godfrey <laughs> Halloween has a psychological weakness <laughs> to pastels. That's right. I forgot about <laughs> and that. And it just negates his ability to use powers. So, yeah. none of his powers work on anything pastel. Oh, no. Yeah. And Roger's weakness is holy symbols. It was picked for him by being undead. Uh, but in his case, it's just that it causes him to go on a long tirade about how none of that, that how religion is all bull because he's a little uh, little high school boy. He's yeah. edgy. Yeah, he's all he's too edgy for you. <laughs> I like to assume that even though he's a Frankenstein, he dresses in like a Pantera jacket. I love and it. And a Letterman jacket. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Pantera shirt under the Letterman jacket. There you mm-hmm. go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Total metalhead Frankenstein. Perfect. Which should have just been his name. <laughs> yeah, if he was a regular hero and not a Sentai hero, you would have been total metalhead Frankenstein. The yeah. total's part of it. <laughs> part of it. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm excited to discuss this game because I've got I've got a few thoughts about it. Um, <laughs> Do you? <laughs> just a few. Does your experience give you some thoughts? <laughs> a little bit. Um, l- let's go ahead and dive right into a segment we're calling D20 for your thoughts. D20 for your thoughts. So in this segment, we talk to our guests about their thoughts on the character creation process, um, how long it takes compared to other games <laughs> we've played. <laughs> um, we usually start with our getting to know you questions, but we've we've asked you those already because you've been on our show before. Yeah, but you've been through you. two iterations of our getting it's to true. know you questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so our question this time is what what draws you to these old Bad games. <laughs> Our question is, what? Why? Our question is, uh, your life's work. Why? Uh, you know, uh, we, I think we, I think uh, among most people in the world, we have the highest re- ROI on purchasing a bad game. Yeah. Mm. When most people purchase an old bad game from the 80s, they are going to keep it on their shelf for a while, make no money from it, and then have to throw it away shamefully later. Mm-hmm. Where when we purchase one, it turns into a giant Patreon in money. That's so, fair. So we are we are entirely mercenary about all of this. See, you've learned to monetize we have real, we have real it. That's the key. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. We have real reasons. It's it's Yeah, uh, we love bad things we and reveling in them. Yeah, both of us have a, a shared personality trait of wanting to wallow in dumb nonsense and kind of point and laugh at it. Yeah. Uh, which has led to everything that we do for the shows. We, we <laughs> Everything we, that we are as yeah. people. We uh, are, we find the worst role playing games. We let people tell us what the worst movies are. We read star Wars novels that are rightfully not legal anymore. Uh, <laughs> we're friends with the worst people. Yes. <laughs> we're the, we're the worst possible <laughs> network. Ugh. We, we worked hard to find it. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's just our thing. Um, we we just like finding old bat. The, the, the tr- I mean, the truth of the matter is, for as much as we like reading these and making fun of them, we don't play them. Right. Right. Well, right. You have the same thing that we do as the like, we don't have to follow through on any of yeah, that. We yeah. just get no. to like enjoy the garbage parts for the garbage that they are and then walk away. Mm-hmm. I just I think when we started it, it was like, oh, just because we know about RPGs and that's one of the things that we know about. (laughs) Yes. But honestly, through the years of doing this, it has become such an interesting delve into the way that all of these different mechanics work and how different eras had different ideas about things. Well, we've definitely hit a point where we can read like the first three pages of a book and then just be like, so this came out in about what? 94, 96. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, really? Okay. D D 10 roll under stat plus skill. (laughs) Well, I was wondering, I always wonder about that when I listen to your show too, is like how much have you gleaned about, you know, like the way that like you're almost unofficial historians at this point of like this whole 
you know, like growth and change over time. Yeah, it's weird that I feel like when it comes to specifics, if you were like, tell me, you know, what were the mechanics of this specific game that you reviewed? Unless it was one that really stuck out, I'd be like, I don't yeah. remember that. Yeah. But when it comes to the gestalt of it, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've retained so much information on trends that happened, yeah. the way that various ideas of how to roll or what you should be rolling and what a character is and what they should be doing Mm -hmm. has changed and evolved over the years. And it's so interesting. One of the things I think we've both picked up a talent for is we can read a book like from the intro. If we were just the, just the intro section, I guarantee you we'll both be able to tell you what decade that was. And if you give us the skill section too, we usually can get the year within one or two. Yeah. (laughs) Because it's, it's just, the trends are so noticeable over time. Yeah. So here's a question too. I've, I've always wanted to ask is there a thing, um, like a trend in games yeah, that we have, grim. <laughs> yeah, great, um, uh, that we've moved away from that you think that we should go back to that you wish modern games had? More tables. God bless them. But modern design <laughs> does not want the random tables yeah. as much as I do. Yeah. Uh, there are certain things that I would say I like about old games. I don't know that they need to come back, but I'm glad that they are there where they are. Yeah. One of them is we talked about it in the main episode was a uh, chummy asides that kind of like you feel like you're connected to the author a little more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That stuff's all gone in modern games unless they're OSR because OSR is kind of still the world of uh, a person. One person's yeah, passion project. It's a passion project. And so they'll happily insert a paragraph that's just them saying, I think games should be played in the following manner. Um, but I like that in old games where there wasn't as much editorial streamlining. Mm-hmm. And so you just found weird things yeah. when you're reading them. And even if they weren't good, it was fun. Yeah, I definitely think random tables should be more prevalent. I know yeah, I've seen, especially with like any submissions and stuff, like more and more that like our supplement books that have random tables in them to go along mm-hmm. with your game. And it was like, well, if you put them in your game, then we wouldn't need a whole separate books of random tables. <laughs> yeah, but then Not I that couldn't I don't sell love a whole separate them. book. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's just, that's <laughs> like, killing the small market. That, right. that, that little, that market of folks selling 99 cent books that are just 1000 cars or whatever. Right. Yeah. I see. And I'm a sucker for those. So absolutely. <laughs> I love them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Much as I love the more modern trend towards more narrative control over who you are and what you do and less about like, oh, you have this power and it's got this number, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when you have things that are like fate or PBTA or things where it's much more about the words than the numbers. I see how the random tables get put by the sidelines, but God, there's just something about rolling on a bunch of tables, taking this disparate pile of random nonsense and going, how do I turn this into a thing? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. How that do I make so this satisfying. make any kind of sense at all? Yeah. Like, yeah. I can, and I think there's, go ahead. I can go. see like taking these tables in, in the, the stuff that we just did in the last couple of episodes um, and just getting to that point where you know the names of the powers, but you have mm-hmm. zero information in the book about what that means. And then you get to <laughs> define that, right, for a narrative sort of system. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, granted, their definitions are all there in the book if you want them, but you could also skip that part and just use it as a jumping off point. Yeah, right. Which I, I'm a fan of. What I like in random tables is when they provide basically improv prompts. Yeah, like mm-hmm. and for me, that that means they have to be both challenging and wildly different because, you know, you look at some of the oldest tables from like AD and D and so on, like that one that's just like, what type of strumpet did you encounter? You're like, ah, <laughs> I encountered a tempestuous strumpet and a wanton doxy. And you're just like, I don't know what that means. And even if I did, they wouldn't be that different. This is not worth the random table. Right. Um, but in terms of role playing challenges, I love random tables. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, they're so good. Mm hmm. Uh, So what sort of lessons do you think we can get from examining these older games? Like, do you think it can help us avoid uh, some of the common pitfalls that that were uh, prevalent in a lot of those earlier eras? I mean, absolutely. Yes. We we talk about there are a number of things we talk about that we see disappearing and dying over the course of uh, history of role playing game design, usually for the better. Mm -hmm. Um, The the snooty paragraph about how they're going to use the he pronoun throughout this as Webster's defines uh, has has started to go away. And that's nice. 
<laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, just certain things like the seduction skill mm -hmm. being more inclusive the later you get or just not existing. Yes. Mm -hmm. We talked about that one quite a bit on the show that, that, uh, there's a, there's a trend in in designing role playing games to pad the skill section out by defining all these commonly understood words. So you're like, I have my I have a skill in climbing, and then after that it goes like, climbing is the vertical ascent or descent of a surface using tools or perhaps freestyle. And you're like, why would you put this in here? I didn't. This isn't a dictionary. Uh, but notably, it leads to people shooting themselves in the foot a lot because I mean, if you listen to our show enough, enough you know I'm always pissed off by. Seduction, this is the art of attempting to engender a sexual liaison with a member of the opposite sex. And I'm always like, why do that to yourself? Mm -hmm. Why limit it like that when you don't even have to? When you could have just put seduction, the skill of seducing people, and left it at yeah. that. Right. <laughs> but no, there's, there's, there's a ton to learn. We've learned over the years that uh, maybe the D&D &D stat set isn't the most important thing in the world, and we don't need to apply it to every game. Yeah. Whoa, mm -hmm. I'm shocked. There's so many things in these old <laughs> games that we end up coming out and being like, all right, well, you know, writing advice, try to avoid certain pitfalls as far as, you know, putting unnecessary information, breaking up necessary information. Like if you're in the middle of character creation or a combat section or how to do something and you're like, and now a timeline. And you're like, I don't need this right now. Oh, Stop it. <laughs> uh, the hundred thousand year timeline, most of which is nonsense words that don't show up ever again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, the Grubulins invaded the Durflin. Do either of those exist anymore? No, that happened 130,000 years ago. Okay, Thanks are for either telling of those me. playable character types? Well, what if you're going to nope. be a historian in this world? <laughs> I guess that's useful, yeah. <laughs> definitely put that at the very front of the book. Yep. In the middle of the character creation section. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. No, there's 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 so many lessons to be learned from reading old games. The, I, we have a lot of listeners who are designers, and that's really the, the number one reason they came to the show is because we spend a lot of time on what not to do mm -hmm. and how and, and, and when DM advice is bad, mm -hmm. which is surprisingly common, because one of the things that shifts over the years is uh, the relationship between the DM and the player. Yeah. It's a lot less adversarial. Yes. And a lot less imperious. Like if you look at really old D&D, &D, you have things like there's only one person at the table who is allowed to talk to the DM. Yeah, you have the, the caller. shot caller. Yeah, what? yeah. The early, the, in the earliest days, there were formalized roles among players at the table. You had the shot caller, whose job it was to gather all the the uh, PC input, revise it to their liking, and then present it to the DM. What? And, this and then is the not DM family would, feud. This More is than one person. Can talk. <laughs> good answer. And then you also good you answer. Also had the, good answer. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about an era where I, Gygax pretty famously would occasionally play behind like opened cabinet doors so no one could see his face. Yeah. And would only respond to the caller. Well, wow. Yeah, it was there is. Why were this... people friends with him? <laughs> <laughs> because there was an idea that the person running the game wasn't a player. Right. You weren't right. playing a game. You were being in charge of things. Yes. Yeah. It's like the difference between a director and an actor. Whereas nowadays, it's much lo more like, oh, we're all just this is another you know, kids player on the playground. Yeah. So, so back yeah, then, I mean, the DM was basically a human computer that yes. would accept input and push output and theoretically, and like, you know, makes a game. Say and that your character neat. died. It's neat because we've seen that role evolve over decades where it moved from in the 70s. It was like the DM isn't even a person you're allowed to talk to or look at. They're just a person who exists at the table into the 80s where the DM is like a gnomic God figure who you're not you, you don't want to arouse their ire or they'll kill you with a flying cow mm -hmm. uh, into the 90s where they're still really important, but they aren't treated with that degree of crazy reverence. And then by the time you hit the 2000s, you start seeing GM-less games and mm -hmm. games where you pass the DM res or GM responsibility. Uh, it's definitely a thing that has evolved over time because, uh, I, honestly, I, I, my personal opinion, it's because the, the uh, player base has gotten younger over the years. Mm -hmm. um, the whole thing of wanting to be p pretend like the DM is everybody at the table's dad has kind of yeah got, started to feel silly when no one at the table is dad age. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think, too, it's, you know, just uh, the fact that we have like a whole different 
like type of person too playing mm-hmm. that like we've we've opened up games like i think about you know like if gygax was like a terrible dm like i'm like i wouldn't have even <laughs> been invited to those games anyway so like i don't know why i'm so mad about them like you know it's there is a level there of front- democracy to it that just wasn't there before Mm-hmm. I can totally see why people would be mad about that. No one likes hearing about what the original history of D&D is because it's so contrary to what the kind of established positions about what D&D is. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, this game shouldn't be a miniatures game. It never was before. And it's like, no, uh, it's an outgrowth yeah, of Based it. on a miniatures it's game. A, a miniatures yeah. game called Chainmail is the first thing that D&D ever was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of that, I think, in the history of games, though, of like, it was never like this. It's like, mm, actually, it was. Like, this is not how games were meant to be, really, because they were like that for like 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's our job, to be burdened with the terrible knowledge of the truth. <laughs> Speaking of terrible knowledge of the truth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, how do you think character creation in this game stacks up to <laughs> other games? I I. So we talked a lot about Heroes Unlimited because that was another random rolling superhero game. And actually Sentinels was too. We did a lot of random Mm -hmm. rolling in that one. Mm -hmm. And this, for some reason, Ryan... I don't know why this one broke me. I don't know why this you had to make five characters. I I did have to make five characters at once. And there were some things that were a little confusing. and, And it was three columns of weird font that I had a hard time kind of following at points, especially when you have tables that split into different sections and you have to kind of go back and forth there was there was a lot going on see this felt like almost the same as heroes unlimited to me i think you're just not as familiar with it i think that's the difference i want to point out one thing about that they came out the same year oh that hurts i mean technically both both games had their first because we we reviewed revised editions of both games yeah uh, both at Heroes Unlimited and uh, Marvel Super Heroes Role Playing both came out in 84. Okay. And then their revised editions came out in 86 and 87, respectively. So the reason they feel so similar is because they're from roughly the exact same era of yeah. uh, RPG superhero game design. And I, and that, I can Ryan. see this. I can see the similarity easily uh, there. And this one feels a little more complex overall. Like if we if we were if we were to dive into like the component creation or whatever you were talking about with that with the robotics and whatnot Mm -hmm. then i could see it being a little bit um even more complex at that point they both have this is the thing i find in 80s design which is that they every time you look close at a small piece of the game it fractals out into a whole new subsystem that uses its own rules yeah (laughs) like uh if you just just take robot design if you build a robot in this game you have to go to this whole robot subsection uh you start you're not given a budget because this game doesn't use real money but uh instead you're gonna you're gonna start building your robot with like parts and with tool with a whole new toolkit that's not connected to the powers engine where in heroes unlimited if you rolled robot you were given an a budget in the millions of dollars Mm -hmm. and you used an entire new purchasing subsystem to build your character didn't it have like a totally different system for like picking magic stuff too yep Mm -hmm. yep sure did Mm -hmm. um and this game is is the same thing um the the these games both come from an era where subsystem it was encouraged that subsystems should be whole new game engines um, as opposed to a more modern take on everything being kind of using the same rules and just changing the flavor around mm-hmm. them a little bit. Yeah, I, I would be really interested to see how this game actually plays. Uh, I in, would not. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, the one thing you can say for once you get used to that big, dumb periodic table of yeah. a resolution chart, That's fair. it's not super complicated because uh, you're always just like, the initiative is just roll against your agility. Mm-hmm. The, the, uh, the, you, you just treat your agility as your rank number and roll and see where you get and then you go in order um, and then attacks are just like I will shoot a beam at that guy I roll uh, it says I got uh, I, I cross reference my chart because it was a remarkable beam shot it does 56 damage what is your response and they go I have body armor that absorbs the first 34 damage yeah so it's a, it's a uh, game of numbers in the combat and, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also defenses. And what defenses do is they inflict a negative column shift on the attacking player. Mm-hmm. So you'll say things like, I shoot you. I got a incredible result. So it's 36 damage. And they go, uh, actually, because of my my uh, force field, I'm going to column shift that down to the left. So you have to get that that result. And then you look at that part of the chart and go, oh, OK, instead of hitting you for 36, I hit you for 12. Yeah. And I do think that, like, as annoying as it is to have, like, that giant chart that a column shift honestly is a lot easier than remembering it's like a minus 10 to the damage over 
three turns plus, you know, like, it's easier to remember the numbers. Yeah, if you're willing to have that chart open, mm-hmm. yeah. like, if you are willing to have that as a conceit of, yeah, this needs to have this chart open, then it ends up being mostly fine as far as mm. running goes. Yeah. And, I mean, even as far as making characters, we did use an Ultimate Powers book that made it way more complicated <laughs> than it normally True. would be. That is fair. There are several dozen versions of, like, what your physical form is, whereas normally there are five yeah. Yeah. in the main book. The one big thing is that if you're using just the five versions, you are significantly more likely to end up being told to make a robot power suit or something. Yeah. <laughs> where in this one, you're almost always just going to generate someone who's got, like, five superpowers. Yeah. So you get your powers are wild and weird and it takes longer to get used to what they are. But at least you aren't f- more likely to be forced to engage some one of the archaic subsystems. That makes sense. Yeah. And also you could have just not picked Changeling. So. That's, that's hmm. 100% hmm. true. Um, and I, I also I honestly I think that like if you were sitting at home and doing it and not feeling rushed. Yes. It might have been different, too, because you're sitting around with all of us. We're all done. Yeah. You're and still I'm going still and we're like powers. watching the time of like, OK, I have to edit all of this. I'm trying not to, you <laughs> know, literally like was in my mind as I was all night to do it. I think maybe it wouldn't have been as annoying. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, think it, about it was pretty straightforward uh, um, as a process, technically. Right. Yeah. I was yeah, just I mean, doing just it a lot. Think about if you were like, oh, I have to make five heroes unlimited characters and one of them's a cyborg and one of oh, them's no. a mutant and <laughs> that would, so that would be worse. random stuff to do that would be worse yeah it's not exactly that this was you know oh the systems themselves are particularly complex it's just you had to do all of the systems yeah. i had to write times. down far fewer numbers Mm. Yeah, uh, basically, in terms of 80s TSR, this is a very streamlined, straightforward and easy to use system. Yeah. It, <laughs> oh, yeah. OK, oh, no. <laughs> so I'm going to step back uh, from from my brain breakage uh, a little bit <laughs> and, and get a little bit more objective here. Um, I, I did kind of enjoy the face rip thing uh, where you've got your seven attributes and it was it was so different from rolling 3D6 and applying that to things it was you roll a percentage on one of these five charts and then one of those is going to be like your your attribute name it was was Mm -hmm. so different from like traditional systems that that it it was a little satisfying in a way yeah i mean the the way that you make the character in the game having just a column usually the thing is where you'd normally just look at one you wouldn't have to worry about all of them right you know if you're just making a one regular character you're like all right i just do seven rolls on this one column i write down the name and number for those that's great yeah and then you move on and a few and things get, up and yeah you'll you know you're like all right i'll add the numbers from here i'll add the numbers from here done yeah the one nice thing about this game is that it is so random every aspect can be randomly rolled is that uh there are a plethora of available character at creating engines like i've got one in front of me right now where i can press one button and it just spits out an entire new character yeah yeah using all the rules that we just used yeah so i can be like oh look i made a, star- a cyborg with artificial limbs and organs and he can animate drawings and uh <laughs> turn himself into a vegetable and he has <laughs> okay no it was a good character generator but <laughs> well but that, that's pretty amazing though because it, it when you i guess when you think about it, it it is very programmatical how you can create characters in this system it's yes. literally you go to a bunch of tables and work your way through the tree of options and now you have a character uh, which is very indicative of those old 80s style games where it's it's more of what can your person do than who is your person yeah the uh we also using the ultimate powers book ended up having way more nonsense because it's the same Way to make a character in the main book. Mm -hmm. You roll for a category and then you random roll for a power within that category. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, But all of the categories have, you know, a handful of things like you're rolling a D10 on your power roll. And for some of them, they don't even have 10 powers. (laughs) 
Like, they'll just have multiple numbers for one of them. Like, the matter control is mm. basically just the various elements, and then you can get something like weather control, which doesn't do anything. Oh, <laughs> technically, yes. Weather control doesn't... It's it's one of the worst written powers what? in the book. So, we didn't talk about... <laughs> we, we didn't talk about this very much. We hinted at it in the character creation rules, but one of the ways that you can develop your character in this game is through power stunts. And as an easy example of a power stunt, let's just take the fastball special when uh, Colossus picks up Wolverine and throws him and Wolverine slashes targets faster because he got thrown, mm -hmm. even though it's kind of silly that 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 works at all um, <laughs> to do something like that, because ultimately between Colossus's super strength and Wolverine's claws, there's nothing like the fastball special directly. They had to make that up and try it uh, w when this happens. To, to make this happen, you have to spend 100 karma, which I don't think a single one of us had 100 karma to start. Mm -hmm. I did. Oh, okay. God, right. Um, <laughs> you have to spend 100 karma. You have I to make a, inc close. an incredible difficulty a test to attempt to do the thing. And if you succeed at that, then you do that, that power stunt once. And if you uh. would like that power stunt to become a permanent part of your repertoire, you have to do the exact same power stunt and spend 100 karma and succeed at it 10 times in a row. Oh, and wow. then it just becomes a thing you can do. Now, uh, weather control, to get back to the core point, weather control is a power. They were like, this power is universally very powerful because you've seen what Storm can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she can just do anything with weather control. She can make ice cubes in a glass for some reason. It works in space for some reason. Uh, well, to, to balance the fact that it seems like it's overwhelmingly powerful, it starts doing nothing. And if you want it to do anything, that's power stunts. Yeah. Oh, you can, wow. You can basically... Uh, duplicate any other power that you can argue yourself into, mm -hmm. but you have to spend a hundred karma and do a power stunt to do it. Why not just start it out with like one type of weather being like only rain? That's, That's what we would have done. That is literally in our episode of what I was like, why? Why do you not just be like, I can make why it was sunny. That your That's answer? my power. Like why was yeah, it like, the most yeah, unsatisfying how it, thing? How it made me wonder how long until Storm's career did she take? Did it take for her to realize she's a mutant? Because she was born with like weather control that developed when she was thirteen, but it didn't do anything. Right. She had to be like, I wonder if I could make it hail around here ten times in a row and get lucky on the rolls. But you have to do so much like things to get karma before you can actually like even think you can do things like that. Yes. Yeah, well, so. and forget like sharing your karma and somebody accidentally killing somebody. <laughs> and let me just say that Storm started out her life as a pickpocket, so definitely not getting much karma, losing a whole lot of it. Mm -hmm. Well, at least she wasn't, you know, killing people and going down to zero. Well, no, you weren't going to zero, but she was definitely losing like 50 to 100 every time she was stealing from oh. people. Yeah, so she, she, she'd zero out eventually anyway. Wow. Uh, it, it does lead to a, the, the, the morality that was injected into the system and the power stunt stuff leads, unfortunately, away from something that looks like Marvel, where you'd have characters like the Punisher who kills indiscriminately or like Storm who could do all kinds of things with weather control and didn't have a period where she couldn't. Yeah. Like the moment she had weather control, she's like, oh, OK, I know I have weather control. Watch as I make it lightning over there mm -hmm. and snow over there. Yeah, um, there was never a point in her story where she was like, I can make some wind sometimes. Yeah, I think that that's a like a continuous problem, though, with like when we start to like gamify fiction. Is that yes, like that is. The, the idea that we need to balance things? And it's like, well, that's not how the stories work. And it just you can't. You can't mechanize some of these story points. You just can't. Right. It feels really weird. Part of it is is adding fail chances is what's killing that off. Right. Like if you look at a more modern superhero game like Masks or Sentinels, uh, your power will go off. Even if it doesn't do very much, you have your powers and you can use them and they do do stuff and you can interact with the world with them. Even if you fail at the application right. you're trying. It's just what the consequences of doing that are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they strip the conf consequence from this weird binary of something happens or nothing happens to, you know, you didn't something affect the story the that wanted. much. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's wild in a game where you can have such a power disparity off the bat that they even cared at all about balance. Yeah. I mean, there was always this idea that we wanted to try and balance things that existed at the time, but also they were like, but we need to account for the fact that, especially in something like a superhero game, they're like, yeah, but we have to be able to make everyone from, you know, Daredevil up to Superman 
And so they're like, we'll just make it a small chance that someone becomes Superman. <laughs> but if one of your players at the table is like, hey, I rolled a 100, I'm Superman, then everyone else <laughs> at the table gets to go, oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. What a game, though. Oh, yeah. I spent so much time while you were making your character trying to find the rules for how many actions you could take in a round. Oh. <laughs> because... I had at first looked at dodging because I was like, oh, I have shift X agility. Like if I want to dodge something, it's real easy. Uh, but I was like, all right, what's dodging do? And they're like, oh, dodging. If you try and dodge, then depending on what you roll on your feet table, you'll shift. You'll call them shift down anyone else's uh, roll to try and hit you. And I'm like, cool, great. And then it also says, and you can only take one more action in a turn, no matter what. And I went, okay, but how many actions do I take? Right. And then that got me in a rabbit hole of just like, where the hell is any information <laughs> about anything here? It's got to be only one action per round, right? At that point? It is one action per person baseline, and you can roll a feat to try and get more actions. Wow. So if you're like, all right, I want to do more than one thing, then you're like, great. Uh, you have to roll a like agility thing at depending on how many actions you're taking, like various column shifts down. It's uh, it's an interesting idea mm -hmm. that I was like, you should probably have just decided it was one and just leave it at one. Yeah. Oh, it's so wild. I mean, the one thing I'm happy about is they didn't do the mistake that so many games have done and honestly even continue to do which is the action advantage thing where you're like oh your number of actions is tied to one of your stats which means if you screwed that stat up you don't get to do as much mm -hmm. thankfully that is not it I'm, I'm just glad i had five chances to have my stats somewhat like usable yeah um and it turns out one of my forms is actually not bad hmm or or is it i don't know <laughs> No, my cyborg ex exoskeleton is fantastic. Hmm. Comparatively. That's the one that can f generate fire. Ooh. Fire. Hot fire. So how does the process of character creation in this game reinforce the feel of this game uh, and set expectations for play? Or does it? Badly? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it doesn't. <laughs> like, unless there's a lot of rolling on random tables. Well, I mean, it uh, sets well, you'd you up be for surprised. That is, there definitely is. You're rolling percentiles a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely learn the basic mechanics of the game because the language of the game is is shared across all the, the aspects. So, you, you know, not only do you have incredible strength or whatever, but you do you do an incredible damage result on the on the chart to uh, to see how much damage mm. you do when you try or. or you get a, a remarkable when you're trying to overcome a challenge. So you at least learn the language of the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is consistent but, in those like keywords. But I've been playing this game for nearly 30 years, or at least no aware of it and playing it intermittently. And I still don't remember the order of the words. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I would, there's I would, no, I would like, argue there's no yeah. face rip like acronym that you can use for. Yep. That that it's it's really bad. Yeah, it'd be like Well, and I have to say, other than like poor or typical, the rest of them are like all variations on you know, it's like excellent, amazing. Mm -hmm. Like honestly, yeah, if you're like, well, what's better, amazing or incredible? You're like, I don't know, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a, it's a thing that you, you see from time to time in games that try to replace numbers with words because I think it's more immersive or usually the difficulty chart where they're like, ah, this is difficult, but this is hard. And you're yeah. like, I'm not going to remember which one is which. <laughs> What's the difference between this being puzzling versus this being challenging? Yeah, good, <laughs> excellent, remarkable, amazing. Like, yeah, I could never remember what order those are like. No. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's not great <laughs> no it's excellent <laughs> they really should be amazing an actually it should be something easy to remember um yeah yeah um, it should have been marvel <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, miserable average remarkable 
Uh, that something for V. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> Excellent and uh, ludicrously Legendary. good. Yeah. Legendary. See, that could have been more. Yeah. Yeah. It could have. He has a really missed My understanding is that the new game to be coming out features what they're calling the D616 system. Oh, yes. Because, I saw that. Yeah, because it's got something to do with the Because you roll 616 dice. <laughs> I think it's you roll 2D6 and keep one or so there's a re it's it's a qc thing with, with yes. the name yeah. wasn't 616 yeah. supposed to be like one of the universes or something like that yes. that's the main yeah. continuity the main yeah. Universe. yeah that's the yeah I, it bothered Wild. me i will say it bothered <laughs> me it's like you're trying too hard <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm just glad they didn't name it after the mcu's universe number which i think is one nine 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 oh that would be oh, hard to say i'm trying to remember what the actual number is for it Wow. Oh, they've been downplaying its existence. They, at oh, one yeah. point, it got named. They, they like uh, the the comic book company was like, "Yeah, we know the the universe for the number for the MCU." And then the people at the Marvel Studios were like, "Yeah, we don't want that to be a thing that exists. <laughs> we don't want people to have to be like, what's that? One nine 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 nine. Did I say enough nines? It's one in five nines. Wow. That's no nineteen ninety nine ninety nine. That's no. Mm-mm. <laughs> One of the things we like to do is look at the character sheets, too, and see what it can tell us about playing the game and about what kind of things are going to be important in the game. Um, How do we feel like these character sheets do with that? I would say one of the more interesting things Mm -hmm. about the character sheets in this, uh, especially in the phase rip section for your abilities, is it feels like the game is going to be more about growth than it actually is given that you're like, here's my initial rank. Here's what it is currently. Here's my role. Like, so you can see the progression of where you're going, but the amount of points it takes to grow is so much Mm -hmm. that, and the impediments in the way. Yeah. It feels like this is lying to me about how much I'm going to get better. Yes, mm-hmm. I think that's part of what our read throughs because we, like I said, we tried to do this as our pilot episode, and then we came back later and did it as our 200th episode. And it, uh, it's been forever since I've been able to listen to the pilot. It was on like four computers ago, uh, <laughs> but we were largely positive on the game because we didn't know any better back then. But then when we came back and, l- and read it again for episode 200, we were like, "Oh no." This game has so many bad lessons. It's <laughs> so unplayably bad. Yeah. I, I have to say, one, there are not that many lines to write your powers. Um, no. Or well, to write any. In the base game, not about the, uh, the powers supplement. That's true. You are going to have between two and five. Mm-hmm. Right. That's it. And if you're looking at getting double powers, powers that take up two slots, you could have one. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's it's endlessly amusing to me that the ultimate powers guy came out and was like, what if we just tripled the amount of powers everyone had? Yeah. Will that mess with the balance or anything? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, because you'll all be rolling things like battery. What is this? I, I can charge my energy up. What does that do? Nothing. <laughs> I have poor battery. Yeah. There's a lot of powers in the ultimate powers guy that don't do much, mm-hmm. which is I'm pretty sure why they gave you so many extras. So you can have all these powers like Gestalt and Nemesis and Trouble Seeker that don't have any really strong effect on a combat. Instead, just sort of mess with you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is that you have the the primary abilities like your phase rip and the spots to write everything. And then you go over to the secondary abilities and those boxes are equally big. And I only had to write like one thing in there. Instead that is of weird. Six or seven. That bothered me. It's like this box. I just put a. 10 but this one i have to write incredible 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 like i have to you know like they don't fit it just it's mm-hmm. poorly like laid out yeah well it's it is a very old character sheet and yeah you can tell that the layout is not great uh one nice thing about this game is that there are so many uh player created character sheets so the, beloved that people put way too right. much time into making <laughs> stuff for this it. game is what 30 38 years old mm. so there's, there's been plenty of room for people to get in there oh. and mess with it Oh, oh, I was like, that's not that. It's not that old. And then I was like, how old am I? Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bummer. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it's interesting because like, you know, this this definitely does not account for a changeling for sure. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I, I literally would have to take 
five character sheets and staple them together to make my character. Yes. Effectively. You could write small. <laughs> I, I do kind <laughs> of like wish. In like different colors. I wish the Ultimate Powers book came with a new character sheet. It really yeah. should. That had that book in mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the changeling is, it'd be very hard to, it's only 100 on the D100 chart. That's yeah. You're not true. supposed to get it all that often. And it, it, I think it even warns you in the changeling section, like, look, you might want to roll something else. You're just going to be here all day. <laughs> look, buddy. <laughs> there aren't that many characters in the Marvel Universe that have two relevant combat forms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's not, you can always be like, my character's a changeling because he's Bruce Banner. And sometimes he's the Incredible Hulk. Mm-hmm. But I don't really need to know Banner's stats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because right. he's not going to um, be doing much. But in terms of characters who are like, well, I can switch between one combat form and another combat form. Uh, those are fairly rare. They're not unheard of. I can probably think of one or two, but they are fairly rare. Yeah. It, usually you're looking at shapeshifters. Yes. And I don't even know yeah. why they've got an option for five. That seems like overkill. It's, it's too many. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't even know who that's specifically for. It's got to be someone who can not only copy people, but their powers as well. Notably, the cover of the Ultimate Powers Guide is a, a, a 80s list of characters who had multiple other characters' powers. Hmm. And they're so obscure that I can only name like four of the five of them and that's being generous yeah i was gonna say well there's mimic and super scroll and warlock on there the guy in the front is nemesis and i have no idea who colossus nightcrawler mystique rogue is and she's <laughs> also got a wolverine <laughs> foot yeah yeah i have no idea who that is <laughs> that is wild yeah oh goodness but yeah that's that, that's your little the, the, all of those characters though aren't form shifters they're power copiers yeah and some of them are compounds like Super Scroll is a compound. He has the powers of the Fantastic Four all the time. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, uh, th- that's off on a tangent. I just find the cover of this book amazing because they were like, yeah, you can put some characters that I guarantee you no one knows who they are on the cover <laughs> of the book. It's the 80s and we're making role playing games. There's no rules. Exactly. <laughs> I Should we put Wolverine on the cover and sell this book? No, you could put the foot of Wolverine. <laughs> yes. No, you put a weird green bug tentacled or, or bug antenna Captain America on the front. <laughs> yeah, man. Because exactly. it's, you know, Captain America and also Hawkeye, maybe? It's Captain Mantis, <laughs> and I don't know why you don't know that. <laughs> it's Dementis? Oh, uh, I'll take it. So good. Uh, so... There's These probably are terrifying. A lot. Sorry, There's... I'm just looking really close at this cover. Right <laughs> <It's so terrifying. laughs> and I just like, why is like one like an extra from The Lion King on Broadway? <laughs> exactly. Well, it's, it's just. God bless you, Warlock. <laughs> Warlock's a robot, and he can copy the powers of other people. That's his deal. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Mimic can copy up to five mutant powers at a time. Super Scroll is the Fantastic Four. And I'm kind of wondering if that guy in the front is an early ver- isn't an early version of Taskmaster. Mm. I don't know, because it's definitely the Iron Man shoulder and chest bits, the Hawkeye face mask and boots, and then the Captain America <laughs> shield and shirt. And no, first appearance of Taskmaster, he already had that outfit. I, I no idea. I have no idea who that is. And I think maybe Ant Man helmet. Yeah, he's just a mix of the current Avengers. Yeah, he's just an Avenger. Amalgam. He's even green for the Hulk. That is wild. Yeah. Amazing. Strange. No idea. Yeah, yeah, that's so weird. So anyway, okay. just put. Not that that's super relevant because it's like I mean we're describing visually a, a, a thing that no one on the podcast can see. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it is it is interesting to note that at this time period you could put out a book like this on store shelves with just five nobodies on the cover <laughs> and nowadays you know they'd force a wolverine onto that oh absolutely oh, yeah. and a spider-man mm-hmm. yeah, yeah well you sure. know we'd have to go through like six committees uh like story board people and like you know yeah mm-hmm. absolutely so this next question uh probably has a lot of answers uh but we'll see <laughs> um <laughs> What, what do you think is one of the biggest flaws of character creation in this system? And, and actually, what is one of your favorite parts? Well, obviously, the favorite part for both of us is going to be the random tables. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the only thing that you steal from this. <laughs> uh, I mean, the biggest flaw, obviously, whether you're going with the main book or the ultimate powers, either way, is the disparity of the random roll for powers is honestly one of the worst. It's a little 
less likely that it'll be terrible in the main book, given that you're going to have between two to five. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at the ultimate powers and it's between one and 15. Yeah. It's one of those things where if you're the person who's like, I got a power and someone else goes, I have 15 powers. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. I mean, look, like, at, oh, look well, at yours, this is Amelia. Fun. You you had, what, two powers oh, I had at to first. take an extra one because one of them was, like, disintegration and the other one was literally transferring that power to other people. Yeah. Well, and you didn't even start with disintegration. It was, like, enhanced intelligence or, or something silly. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I rolled enhanced intelligence and I was like, I'm not going to give enhanced intelligence to somebody else. Like, Yeah. I'm smart and I can make you smart. Yep. Yeah. Hooray. <laughs> I'm a hero. Because no, knowing is half the battle. They're smart and they can make a, that, that belo belongs in a high school. A teacher yep. belongs in a museum. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, the, the disparity between powers is probably one of the worst things making a character that's a feels bad moment that you like you probably if we're, you were just making this game and wanted to play it, I would just I just be like, yo, everybody gets like four powers. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just just fine. Yeah, that's a much easier way to play. It, it would to, be you, nice. You eliminate some of these random rolls and just go like, all right, everyone play the game as if you rolled a 60 on that. How many powers and contacts and things do you get yeah. to streamline things between us? Mm -hmm. And also you can choose the category you'd like to roll on once so you can get a shot at getting a travel power. Uh, but I do love the, the fact that, you know, coming from the early eighties that instead of that whole, like, Oh, you, you know, roll three D six and maybe you get a three and you're just the worst. Mm -hmm. Most of this, because it's percentile based, the chance of you rolling like a feeble is so low mm -hmm. comparably. And most of them tend to have a decent like curve towards the kind of like middle section of the stats. It's not great. It's still 1984, mm -hmm. but it is definitely this progressive step in trying to make it so that characters can be somewhat balanced against each other. Yeah. 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 And I, I mean, there are things I like and dislike about this game to be sure. Uh, I, I think that, uh, I like the concept of the fighting stat being separated from strength and, and agility so that you don't have any one like guaranteed God stat that exists around that range. Mm -hmm. uh, you have different ways to contribute. Uh, and notably, you can attack with any one of the four uh, a thing. A physical attack can be made with endurance in this game. There are ways to do that. Mm. And similarly, there's a way to make mental attacks with all three of the rip uh, part of the acronym. Oh, interesting. So I like that. I like that everything's got value to it, that you can kind of lean on your best stats and play optimally. Uh, there is a lot that is hard to like. <laughs> Notably, a bunch of stuff we never even engaged with. All the like robot construction rules mm -hmm. and, and how magic is entirely a hindrance and nothing else. Oh yeah, yeah. It it it, it feels very eighties for sure. <laughs> and and there was the, pretty much the random tables and the fact that you could get literally almost any superpower you can imagine with the with the ultimate powers book. Uh, was was kind of fun, but then like you know, rolling it up and and writing it all down and keeping track of it and whatnot for me personally, not the most fun experience. Maybe just don't make changelings. Um, you Maybe all just. you all warned me. The book warned me. Everybody warned me. <laughs> <laughs> just just take out changelings and and we're good. Yeah, the, I think the main problem with making a character in the Ultimate Powers book is because you have every power available, you have a far less likely chance of getting some of the very core powers. You know, like we said before, getting flight is so ridiculously small of a chance. Yeah. Since it's just one set in travel powers that let you do that mm -hmm. if you're doing it all random right like it does say you can pick your stuff oh, if yeah. you want and and i can see coming uh, approaching character creation in this game of this is the type of hero i want in i want to i want a hero that can fly that's you know nearly invulnerable but then like um 
you know, maybe, maybe uh, is a computer genius as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe on, they only have their powers in the virtual world or, or whatever. <laughs> right. And, and now, now how do maybe I piece, Digimon are the how do I piece all these powers together and create that person? Right. Yeah. Um, that is kind of the fun of the random tables is to be like, okay, I've got this massive, whatever stuff. How do I coalesce this into a character? Yeah. And that's that's fun. That I, it can be tr uh, tricky to switch that from fun to uh, playable. Yeah, like it's it's really fun to kind of to kind of pull the character out of the, the the collection of junk that you rolled up. It is a different question entirely. Of can I ap apply this character to the tabletop, even though I managed to come up with what he is? Yeah, right. Yeah, like Which, narratively versus statistically, mechanically, can well, I make things happen? mechanically when you look at it even when you pick the powers let's say you're like oh i wanted to make kind of like a cyclops guy and i wanted to have energy blasts and mm -hmm. that's my thing and i've got a couple other you know small powers mm -hmm. but if i roll three powers one of them is energy blasts i have to randomly determine the power that that is and i'm like oh i have like poor energy blast but randomly one of the other not important powers managed to get like it's amazing i go right well i guess you're my main power <laughs> right now. right yeah i guess i guess i'm changing my concept again yeah yeah that is, that is kind of weird that whole like you get a power and it could just be garbage like a really cool yeah. power and it's garbage but then you get a really like mediocre power and it's a suddenly monstrous yeah. And, oh, I love that there is, even in the games like uh, Bestiary, essentially, where it's just here's all the examples of heroes and villains mm -hmm. and all their stats and powers, there are people who are like, what do you have? I have levitation at feeble. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> That's really what a like power an that Dr. Off the Druid ground. from the Avengers has. Yep. Yeah, and it's like, what does that look like, Dr. Druid? What can you do? Well, I can very slow. I can go down. For, I, if I fall off a building, I fall at elevator speed. I can basically lift my feet off the ground and kind of float around a little, mm -hmm. little bit. Just basically enough to not get fall, my right? shoes dirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the, that's, you have to not look at me. It's it's a power for flavor more than a the more than a useful power at that point, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's kind of interesting if you approach it from like a a narrative sort of uh, approach to playing. But this is the a game. game from the eighties. We don't approach yeah, anything with exactly. narrative. Like. That's the problem, right? So it's it's an interesting system to create an interesting conglomerate of characters that you can then put into a narrative game and have fun with. Yeah. Right, which is but exactly what we're going to do. Like Exactly. Yeah, you could be like, "Oh, here's the character and I'll put him in a system where powers work the way I want them right. to." Right. As it stands, uh, have you ever played the game Channel A? No. Mm -mm. Um John, I know you have. It's a card game that where you get a couple of cards handed out to you that are different parts of an anime and you have to assemble them into the title or description of an anime and then like pitch it to the other players. Oh yeah, the gosh. whole game is just a pitch meeting yeah. and whoever is judging picks their favorite pitch. That sounds okay. so I'm fun. Out, it's really fun. And, uh, and the, the thing I'm pointing out is that it's over when someone picks the pitch. And this is a great game for that to be like, all right, let's roll up crazy characters and see what they, we can do with them. Uh, and, and then come up with uh, with what they are. And you're like, uh, this character is part of the moon and his head's a balloon and and, and, he's <laughs> and other rhyming things and it's just yeah. weird stuff but you don't want to play that once no. you've come up with what it is and, and you just kind of look around the room and go ah, i think the one who's the southern gentleman god of owls yeah. is the funniest one this time let's uh let's just all right hoot nanny you let's win let's start it over <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh rather than put actually putting to put them onto the tabletop yeah <laughs> or if you want to definitely use these random uh, results, come up with crazy random things and then port them over to a game that works in a streamline. Yeah. I, like I'm having a, a difficult time figuring out like, why does my character that I created here exist? Like, uh, like how, uh, lo, what, what, what random nonsense? <laughs> <laughs> what uncaring God would allow this to happen? I still think that yours is fully definable. It does as say a, technical uh, mishap. Ongoing gray goo scenario. It does say technical mishap, and I'm not sure what that means in a high school scenario, but that that creates this, this monstrous changeling that can have five different forms. Well, you all went on the field trip to the nanotechnology factory. Yeah, I guess. And then a box of nanites exploded. <laughs> Field trips, they're so 
dangerous. Field yeah, trips are the number yeah. one way that superheroes happen. Yeah, it requires a signature from your parents for a reason. Well, yeah, but what if you you're know. an orphan robot? <laughs> <laughs> then you, but no one then cares. nobody cares if you die. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no, the book said. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, I guess if you're sentient. If you're sentient. Uh, and and if, you, if you get killed on purpose. Right. Yes. Got so, it. That makes sense. Oh, my God. <laughs> the, part, the part we've been waiting for. It, the part we've been waiting for, it's fanfic time. What do our dinner <laughs> plates look like? This <laughs> is so like the only thing we can discuss during this portion is what do is, our yeah, dinner plates look like? This is our like? secret lair. Uh, so wait, what, what is this? What, what are we doing this right now? This is our fan fiction section where we don't play the game. Although, yeah. Ryan, do we get a fan fiction section for this one? We, okay, we, we have to Which have like a season. Which is why we have season, to get our dinner plates. Like, like, is the AP that we're doing, is that going to be like a season two episode or, or is, is in our, already established? Are we established already? Is, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm not only going to say not only are we established, but we, about a 70% chance we'll just use another day, another game to do it. Exactly. So like, okay, so fan fiction, like what, what does season one look like of this, this, this wild Halloween Sentai uh, mm. sort of thing like how how what do our origin stories and 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 whatnot mean well okay first of all do we want this to be set at a halloween themed high school or like are we at monster high are we at monster high are we is, is this part of is this a spin-off from those dolls those monster high at, uh, oh my gosh like those, yeah sexy those frankensteins rats yeah. for goths yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that what this is um, or are we just playing as those i like i feel like uh, everyone it's change your character to female now if every <laughs> character except us is totally normal yeah yeah normal okay. high school and then <laughs> the spider robot <laughs> sitting in class doing algebra yeah yeah and the whole thing takes place in the town that hates halloween right but yeah. like nobody questions why there's a spider robot that's just like never discussed oh yeah yeah no there's <laughs> There is a full grown man, Frankenstein mm -hmm. walking around and everyone's like, yeah, that's just Roger. It's fine. That's just green from monster prom. Yeah, that's just, fine. Yeah. He's just uh, like super into metal and kind of weird. I don't think that mm -hmm. there's anything else yeah. going on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dude, everyone loves Godfrey. That guy's always holding candy. Yeah. And R Roger's only into metal because someone gave him a rad haircut for the top of his head. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that, that chunk of skin came from, I don't know, the recently deceased Glenn Danzig <laughs> in this universe. <laughs> in this universe. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Glenn Danzig made Veronica and then died, died. and donated his hair. He died of shame. Have you seen that? <laughs> <laughs> it's on the list for movie mastery. No. <laughs> I I need to have uh, Chase have different forms for each class. Oh, and since uh, since Chase has such a high intelligence, I'm going to say there's there's been at least multiple times where uh, where they've had two classes and the same time period and they've had to hop between each class changing forms between each class oh yeah and then like you, don't you know chase is a good student but i think they've got some sort of irritable bowel syndrome they're always going to the bathroom <laughs> also they're always only in one class i mean you got to attend the rest of the classes. A different kid attends that class. <laughs> Some other kid named Chase is in this other class. It's a different kid, though. It's a really common last name. Uh-huh. <laughs> Amalgam. The Spectrum, Spectrum family. The Spectrum, Spectrum right. family, yeah. <laughs> Chase Spectrum. But yeah, my character is definitely a, per a person who was born right here in the high school. That that uh, in some medical uh, lab or something, like, he just woke up and was like, "Oh, what sort of Frank. high school is?" This is like the advanced anatomy class. It's a, it's a, it's a high school, high school where, where uh, every superhero origin story can happen. So, so it's yeah. a high school. Okay, so a high school where I mean, an Ryan, undead. Why are you trying to make sense of this? Did you not sit through this character creation with us? <laughs> Look, no, I'm just, the god of Halloween, <laughs> and when I came down to Earth, uh, are you the catalyst of my entry? Oh, okay, created other people and yeah. now we're all bound together so we said that flash tv show origin where one singular event caused all yeah the, yeah or smallville it has the, to the it almost has yeah. to be right like right. we yeah. were all in the right place at the right time to to have the because i i my was apparently created because of a technical mishap and well yeah let's say i landed in the quad and then the, <laughs> the various rooms that all three of you were in 
happened at the same time when I exploded out from there. Okay, so Absolutely. I would say mine says well, chemical exposure, I but I think Biology, that I'm like... inanimate, stitched together cadaver of various people. <laughs> <laughs> Biology. Yeah. Fine. That's so I said, biology like, I, think that, like, I was originally just a fetal pig. Yeah, it's like AP anatomy and physiology class. And then, like, um... <laughs> we take our AP classes way too seriously I think, here. like, I'm a creation of the robotics team. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Which yeah. makes and, sense. And, and I would be from the, uh, from the IT uh, club. Yeah. Or computer lab, yeah. yeah the computer yeah. club. Yeah, and then I would be from biology, and there you go. We just have three kids, and, and right, and or at least you know I'm a full grown adult, but I yeah, still well, am you high, know I'm a, I got a high school student's brain. This exactly. is this yeah. is the this is the scene you see in every single intro to the episodes, every mm-hmm. single like uh, the credit like sequence previously on, like where yeah, where it just shows pumpkin meteor shoots into the quad. Yeah, it's part right. you got the music yeah. playing, you got the giant pumpkin meteor hitting the ground, and then yeah, all three of song. us in a split screen like ah. Transforming. Yeah. Godfrey's the god of Halloween. Yeah, when he's not messing around. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Snickers? of course, y- you don't know what Earth is like until you, you know, uh, simulate. So you think everybody's a high school student because that's well, where you also, landed. I get, you know, part of my power has been imbued into all three of you. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm not quite god level. Yeah, I assume that that was your final act of, of a power that you had before you fell to Earth, which was just random Halloween caprice. <laughs> so you were just like, I shall come to Earth and inflict Halloween, and then I shall join amongst the revelry, and that cuts yourself off from some of your other powers. Well, yeah, well now that I, I no longer have the aspect of uh, trick, costumes, or spider, <laughs> <laughs> the most famous parts the of Halloween. The quintessential yeah. bits of Halloween, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows that you can divide Tricks, Halloween. costumes, and spiders are yeah. important key facts. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't anyone roll a pumpkin thing? And we'll just have to assume there's an NPC who's the pumpkin ranger. Right, and that's likes, another reason why you're treat. vegetable, which is a super bummer. Yeah. So that's another reason why you're treat, because you, you gave the gift of all these powers exactly. to all. Exactly. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. That's why you that's held the on origins to that. of all the characters. And then they all just started trying to resume Hollow or uh, Thanksgiving life. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving life. Thanksgiving <laughs> life. What the heck? I've been on the phone too long. Uh, no, um, I'm going to say. <laughs> well, after Halloween, high school life. Yeah, that's true. But that is that. that that's almost definitely the foes is Thanksgiving who like. You know, if we could get them out of the way, then Halloween could last longer. Yeah, but obviously our well, nemesis I mean, we, is Christmas trying to come early and like oh, yeah, hone in on our turf. <laughs> Keeps creeping closer is and our, closer. Is, is Santa Claus our nemesis? Almost certainly. Oh, Santa Claus sure. lives. I mean, instead of being well, uh, okay, with or high the school, Easter Bunny because we're afraid of pastels. Christmas high. Oh yeah, Easter. well I'm afraid of pastels. That's true. I mean, Easter Bunny is like one of those situational villains that comes in every now and then and and, and kind of shuts you down. Yeah. The great thing about my weakness to pastels is that it's just it shuts my powers off, but I still have an unearthly strength so I can just punch a bunny into space. (laughs) Now, can we can we say that the way it worked was that all the gods of the various holidays descended on this one high school and infected a bunch of kids? Oh, yeah. And that and and so our rivals are just other kids in the class. Like like even you can tell that I'm in a class because there's just a full on adult Frankenstein sitting in a big in one of those kid chairs. But then like behind him, there's a Santa elf. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. Like, yeah, I don't like that Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> you and me after school, buddy. Three o'clock. It's just a kid dressed in like blue pastel overalls with a little uh like bunny on it and his Johnny Peeps and he is here <laughs> to mess your day. Yeah, so it's all it's all the same high school. Right. Oh wow. Holiday high. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so wow. and, and depending on how popular the holiday is, it'll have more like foot soldiers and so on in the school. So like, there's just one weird kid for Arbor Day. I was gonna say, but, is there one kid that like is like dressed as a tree or like in like yeah, you know like greens? There's that and... one kid who's always setting off firecrackers. Yeah, that's Fourth of July. <laughs> oh, kid. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that kid's a real pain. <laughs> yeah, that's Independence Ray. <laughs> oh, Independence Ray. Independence Ray. <laughs> Can't trust him. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Be right back. I'm going to make Independence Ray. <laughs> I like that there, the idea of there's a whole group of different New Year's. Yeah. It's got one Jewish guy, one Chinese guy. <laughs> so this will be an interesting the game. The Chinese too. kid is like a different one every year, though. 
It's like, yeah. it has yeah. different animal sidekicks like, every year. Yeah. yeah. And they're led by Greg Orion. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> Never give us any ability to do anything. Oh. We will screw everything How? up. No, honestly, this he's, is amazing. He's Irish. He's Greg Orion. This is so good. Greg Orion. Wow. <laughs> Uh, oh. <laughs> that was that was something. Let's talk That's about advancement. Uh, if we wanted to take this further, yeah, le- I, I would love to figure out how we can take this up a level. Oh. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. Take it. Sure, up a level. I'll just tell you right in advance that this game has the almost legendarily worst advancement system. Yeah, so it sounds like that 80s. as we've been like doing this. You're like, well, you have your karma, but good luck. <laughs> The, the problem with karma is it serves too many masters. It really does. Mm-hmm. Karma is your short term Benny mechanic where you get you, you earn it for doing good things. So like, oh, you saved a civilian. Here's 30 karma. Uh, hey, you showed up to the game today. Here's four karma. It's one of those engines, you know, where like you're supposed to the DM is supposed to carefully piece together how much karma to give you based on mm-hmm. minor activities and playing w- and playing well is always one of the list- listed reasons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But by the same token, there are significantly more and faster ways to lose it, not just through spending it, but through things like, oh, you missed a, you missed a coffee date or you were late to class because you were fighting the scorpion. Mm-hmm. And and so that's constantly sapping. That's your like XP. so frustrating. That that's a no win situation, though, as a player. Yes. Right. Because mm-hmm. it's like, and, 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 which thing do I lose more for? And it's encouraged. And obviously you're going to go fight the scorpion because you're going to you're playing because a superhero playing a game. Superhero you want to punch the scorpion. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you'll get aggregate, you'll be net positive for beating the Scorpion in Karma because you get Karma for, you know, stopping villains, rescuing people, mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, you might be net positive unless he like knocks over a, tr- a clock tower or something with his mighty tail during the fight. And then you take the hit for that. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> And now and then we already talked about how you spend to earn power stunts. And that is a ludicrous amount of karma spent over and over and over again until they become official. Mm-hmm. And if you just want to buy a power, oh, boy, they start well over a thousand karma. Wow. Great. Yeah, let me just give you the example that rescuing a person like so that they don't die is 20 karma points. Mm-hmm. And in a single rescue action, you can only ever get up to a hundred. Yeah. So right. even if you're like, I pick up a building full of people and move it so that all of them don't die. You're like, yeah, well you did save way more than five people, but you get five people's worth of karma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you, the classic thing where you stop a school bus from falling off a bridge the only thing it would matter is if it had less than five people on it. And yeah. then you'd be like, ah, I don't even know if I want to save that school bus. <laughs> what is that? 40 karma? <laughs> Meh. Saving three people is way less useful than saving five. Uh-huh. So you'd have to save five school buses. One at a time. Two people on them each. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's ex- it, an unreasonably punishing mechanic. And then again, it kind of makes sense because with the occasional exception of like a special event in comic books, Superheroes don't usually advance the way that other characters from role playing game genres tend to, Mm -hmm. you know, fighters get more powerful and eventually they build a castle and attract 20 men or whatever. But Spider-Man is Spider-Man and he was Spider-Man in day one and he was Spider-Man on day 300. Maybe they make up a new power for him. Like when they gave him the ability to reincarnate from a giant spider or something. But for the most part, we know his powers and they are relatively unchanging. I mean, yeah, unless the, you're in the MCU and he's got a exoskeleton power suit, basically, that gives him extra in powers. Which case he is losing movie. powers because <laughs> he because at the end of the third movie, he loses that thing. Yeah, the I mean, karma, if it was just used for the power stunts and that was it, like you had a baseline whatever your powers were. Mm-hmm. And instead of having to randomly roll for how powerful they were, they're like, Oh, you get one amazing power and you know, two excellent powers or something. Uh, and all you did was karma instead of being XP is just there to up your rolls or occasionally do something weird outside of what the rules say for your mm-hmm. power. Yeah, that would be something. So that would be neat. But uh, instead it is, you could roll real bad, be like, oh, I've got a feeble in the power I really want to use. I guess I'll save up my XP to keep bumping up the levels of that. And that'll take way too long. Yeah. And you won't be able to use your karma for any fun things. 
Yay. That's true. It, it really feels like leveling up in this system is just not overall enjoyable. Yeah. Not really. I mean, I know that a lot of superhero games are like, yeah, we want you to be a superhero at the gate. And so leveling up isn't really a thing that tends to exist in the same way that other games have leveling up. Mm-hmm. But with the fact that this has the whole like, oh, it's not just that you got this power, it's that you got it at a random rank that you might want to level up. It kind of ends up splitting the difference between having having leveling mechanics and not. And it feels like it's much worse for it. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm hmm. Goodness. Yeah. This just seems frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, the one thing you can really say about most superhero games is that they are very well designed for one shot play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, campaign play. I, it's rare to find a superhero game that has an advancement system that I would describe as uh, satisfying. I would say there's uh, of all the ones I've ever read, maybe uh, masks and outside of masks, even even Sentinels, which I love to the ends of the earth. The the uh, it, it's designed intentionally with an with a broadening only advancement system. Yeah. All you can do is change stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I never really thought of that, that that superheroes are, you know, I mean, even if you look at the comics, like their powers they haven't changed to- too much in like 80 years. It's yeah. why when you get one of the, <laughs> the horrible late nineties, uh, early two thousands things with the open game license mm-hmm. where someone's like, Oh, I've got a superhero game and I decided to put it in D 20 mm-hmm. and you're like, Oh, now you have levels of hero yeah. mm-hmm. and you end up being real weird. Mm-hmm. Cause you're like, oh, I'm level one. And I can't fight anybody, but I'm level five and now my eye beams are better. Yeah. Yeah. Like you look at Heroes Unlimited, which has a classic D&D style uh, leveling advancement. Your character can level from one to 15. Mm-hmm. It doesn't affect anything but like your skill percentages and your hit points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's 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 practically a, a grafted on afterthought. Yeah. And maybe like how much damage some, your, your yeah, maybe you'll get some can spells. Do. Yeah. If yeah. you're a caster. Yeah. So uh, ultimately advancement seems like it's almost never the point. To, I, and I kind of appreciate that because. You know, I want to be a hero when uh, I'm a hero. Exactly. You want to start as a hero. You don't want to start as a nobody and eventually get like one little power. Yeah. So it's just an interesting aspect of superhero game design. Hmm. I I have never uh, actually thought about that before. Uh, That's a really interesting revelation. Hmm. That's what we bring. Exactly. That's what we're here for. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, also the free tacos, which are wildly late. I got to I don't I don't want to be rude, but (laughs) these free tacos. We were told there would be free tacos. I'm sorry about that. (laughs) <laughs> it's on you, Ryan. Yeah, I know. I dropped the ball on the free tacos. You know, uh, three more appearances and you get a free T-shirt. So <laughs> that's true. That was the uh, that was the. Agreement. I'm starting to run out of superhero games. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> nah, we can find more. Uh huh. Oh, no, absolutely. I, I have so at much. least five more I, on yeah, the shelf behind so me. So many yeah. more. Ah, uh, so Jeff and John, thank you so much for joining us for talking about Marvel superhero. Yes, seriously. I I, I, have, so I mean, welcome. also not, but as 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 exasperated as I was throughout most of this process, I had a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, no, it was a good time. And good. and we we created some characters that, uh, good or bad, are memorable. They exist. They're, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good or bad, they were bad. <laughs> we sure did make characters. <laughs> uh huh. Absolutely. Uh, Can you remind everyone where they can find you online and the sorts of things you're working on? SystemMasteryPodcast.com, where we make our show System Mastery, where we go through the depths of RPG history to pull up the weirdest, craziest, and worst ideas in game design uh, over the decades to talk about it, to make fun of it, and to have a good time. We also have some other shows where we review movies and Star Wars books, and of course, we ourselves write books. We are currently... Uh, promoting our fourth book, the Dungeon Meister Cookbook, 75 Recipes to Get Your Table Advanced from the Level of Just Pizza and Mountain Dew. Uh, Pop it open to get today and try some uh, goat cheese and herb pinwheels or uh, a gnocchi German potato salad. Oh, man, I made that thing recently. It was incredible. That sounds amazing. Uh, Oh, dude, German potato salad, but you substitute the potato chunks with gnocchi? Get out of town. What? I... Yeah. Why? Yo, mm. get the book. Okay. Get the book. I okay. Need it's available okay, on Barnes and Noble and Amazon. It's under 20 bucks, full color. Very beautiful. All right. Wonderful. 
Well, uh, John, do you have other things to plug or did Jeff say all your things already? Well, of course, if you wanted to support us, you yes. can go over to Patreon at patreon.com slash system mastery. Not only can you get a whole ton of bonus content, we do a ton of stuff over there, but it's also uh, super useful if you listen to all of our shows you can get one RSS feed that will have everything we do. So if you're loving what we do and you want to support us and you want to get everything in one place, that's the simplest way to do it. That is super true. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for doing this with us. This was this was a good time, I think. I think I had fun. <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed watching Ryan be exasperated this time, which was, I mean, that was phenomenal. So thank you for that. We do what we can. <laughs> um, and thank you to everyone for tuning in. Call to action. Yeah, like that. So uh, Marvel, Marvel superheroes, we're done with it. Mm -hmm. Um the the 1984 slash 86 version of the game yes. um i i was very excited to see that a new version is currently play testing yes. um which kind of blows my mind i was very excited to check it out and then i saw some of the stuff that was going on there and i was less excited um but you know maybe it, yeah, i mean i i think out of a sheer curiosity i want to know i think it's um, it's different than a lot of the modern superhero games yeah. are. It seems to be kind of sticking a little more to the traditional the thing that we just did, which I, I wanted I, I, to I do. I see with. Karma's still in it. Yeah, yeah. Karma's but maybe still a they thing. fixed it. Maybe they fixed it. That's, that's what I'm hoping. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't they've, know. Had, they've had a plenty of time, right? Like, the, you know. Yeah, like, you would think. And, and like plenty. 40 years to figure it out. Plenty to learn from. Uh, the the resolution system looks like it could be nice. It uh, does look like it has some tables. It's got tables. You know, so you roll cool. you roll dice. That's cool. Big fan of those. Um, um, I think honestly, they heard us talking about the old game, and they were like, "Quick, before they ruin people's opinions of Marvel role playing games, we got to get this out there." Yeah. And so they like announced it right while we're in the middle of our series. That's, so, that's very true. Um, it's, it has to be the reason. Well, right. I, and now people are going to go out and buy that game because they're like, well, definitely not that other one that they talked about on the show. Yeah, because that's, that's just right? free online. Why, like, would, why would we buy that? Uh, anyway, this was a game. It was a game. And, it was a game. Uh, um, it, not as horrible as I thought it was going to be. Um, do you have Stockholm Syndrome? Did you not listen to any okay. of the audio? <laughs> So here's the thing. So, <laughs> so okay, not the as horrible as it was in the in the moment. In and, the moment, okay. And afterwards, with reflection and through the eyes of uh, various other folks that have grown up with this game and mm -hmm. loved it, and, and with still the help play of it. a qualified therapist. And, yep, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. um, the, it's not bad. It, I mean, it's it's pretty bad, but it's still I can see the the potential for fun. And I'm really sad that we didn't get to do the full base building mechanics i want to know when do i get to do interior design the rpg i want to i want to do 40 because pages of superhero base <laughs> there design. was a lot of like picking out dishes exactly seriously <laughs> and I got none of that we got none of that so i don't know maybe some bonus content, bonus we content. Can, yeah we can we build can our base yeah. build our base uh, uh -huh. because i i really want to see what that looks like and uh one of these days you know maybe we'll have the gumption to do so we should do that for like our next bonus content in preparation for our uh, AP. Oh, we absolutely. can come back absolutely. and give it to Jeff and be like, look what we made. Like what we made. We've look got the we China made. patterns. Ooh. <laughs> Picked it all out. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, calls to action. Um, a quick reminder that Yazeba's Bed and Breakfast still has a few more days on Indiegogo at the time of release of this episode. If you haven't checked that game out yet, uh, you can follow the link in the show notes. Uh, if you want to hear more about that game, feel free to check out our Spotlight episode that we did with Jay and Lily, two of the designers. It was a lot of fun. Well, so I'm much excited fun. for this I love that episode so yeah. much. And uh, this game is just fantastic. Yeah. Now if it would only like come out sooner. I know, right? <laughs> Hurry it up. <laughs> <laughs> but also take your time and do but it. But also take great. your time and make sure it's good. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> We are taking questions for a special anniversary Q&A episode. 
We did this after our first year, but we haven't just directly taken questions from our audience since then. Yeah. So we would really love to hear from you. Um, you can ask us literally anything. Seriously, some of the questions we've gotten are not about character creation at all. Nope. In the slightest. Um, but we will do our best to answer it. So you can find our submission form at questions.charactercreationcast.com. We can't make this episode without the help of your awesome questions. So please don't be shy, even if they're silly, uh, even if they're and, not silly. And, and you know what? It can be anonymous. You don't have to submit your name with oh, that's your true. submission. I don't think we left that as a required field either. Yeah, so you can, so you can literally submit a question and mm -hmm. and send it to us, and we would have no idea who it's from unless you told us. So, yes. But um, also, why wouldn't you want to be like famous and have your name on a podcast? So I know, it's right. <laughs> so you can tell all your friends. You're like, that's my question. <laughs> that's my question. That's my you question. Can still, you can still say that about the anonymous questions, but nobody would believe that's you. That's true. You could tell your friends, and exactly. they'd be like, yeah, <laughs> sure, Craig, whatever. <laughs> it's always great. <laughs> Craig Masterson. Uh, Craig if you Masterson. want to submit questions, feel free. Yep. <laughs> That's a callback. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Uh, speaking of callbacks, uh, we're still in the need of reviews. Uh, we love reading all the amazing things that you have to say about uh, our show, and we look forward to having more to read soon. Um, you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Pod Chaser, Podcast Addict, and Facebook, and I believe that's about it. Not Stitcher. Um, not Stitcher. Uh, they took Still that, that functionality away. I don't know why. Makes no sense. Um, I mean, Podchaser does it better anyway, in my opinion, but, you know. Hot uh, take. Hot take. <laughs> um, as an added bonus, speaking of Podchaser, uh, Podchaser is doing the reviews for Good Campaign for the month of April. Uh, so if you leave a review for a podcast on Podchaser, and I th I want to say also in episodes, every episode review oh, that yes, you leave. Oh, yes, you can go through and <laughs> review 190 <laughs> episodes or something. If, if you want to do that, uh, that's, that's a lot of change for uh, the World Central Kitchen. Every mm -hmm. review is 25 cents towards uh, the World Central Kitchen, which is helping to feed families in Ukraine currently. Um, so it's definitely a great cause. Um, if we reply to your review, uh, they will actually double that. Um, so even if you have left a review somewhere else, we encourage you to share another one in Podchaser this month. Uh, we'll still read it on the show, and we'll still read all, any episode reviews as well. It's true. Um, so if you just go through and start reviewing episodes, we'll just rattle them off uh, as, as we get them. So We're not uh, picky. Yeah, we're not picky, uh, and we'd love to read it. And, you know... Reviews are great. Mm -hmm. Reviews are reviews, man. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. They're but I also right. do care deeply. So please do say nice things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us for this wild series. Um, we had a good time, even yeah. when we didn't. Mm -hmm. We are off next week, um, but we will be back in May with something very special for Series 50. Ooh. I'm doing jazz hands right now. Dear audience, you can't see it. But. <laughs> series 50. Series 50. Series 50. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be awesome. So yeah. I cannot wait for us to record it and for you to hear it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, until then, be safe. Drink water. Get vaccinated. Relax your shoulders. Unclench your jaw. It'll be okay. And keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. 
Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like Asians Represent. Asians Represent celebrates Asian creators and diversity in the gaming community. Join hosts Agatha Chain and Daniel Kwan as they discuss gaming, genre, and representation with their guests, and occasionally argue with each other to the sound of Agatha's beloved air horn app. Okay, I did it. There. Again. For, for real. the second time, uh, for the real time, we've for got real. it. All right. Ryan, I'm just going to complain one more time about this mic stand. Oh, sure. Uh, Please. I can't scoop my chair all the way in because the stupid like legs on it stick out what? so far that like I can't oh. sit all the way. Oh, no. I really terrible. need to swap out. Uh, we need to trade mic stands because yeah. I don't need the, the circular base one that I have. Mm-hmm. And I think you would benefit more from the weighted base. Yeah. Um, instead of those giant legs. And I've got plenty of room for the giant legs. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah, say, say giant <laughs> legs one more time. The, uh, Just the, the giant, audience. The, the, giant the giant legs. legs. Yes. The giant legs. Oh, I've already the got giant, giant legs. So it's fine. That's my superhero. <laughs> Someone out there's got a fetish for that, and they are so excited this is going to be a giant leg cast. What? It's our crown? Giant crumb? legs. <laughs> giant legs. Yeah, for the microphone award. stand. I mean, how how else does a microphone stand? Giant legs. Giant legs. Giant legs. <laughs> the great so, legs. A couple more times. Giant legs. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Serious. Unique New York. Uh, my son's favorite when he's warming up to record anything is photosynthesis. You <laughs> say it real slow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good word. Yeah. Yeah. So Jude and I would do that when we were to record garbage too. It's, just like, it's photosynthesis. Mm. I forgot honey in my green tea and I'm regretting oh. it, but I'm not really because I still like it. My vocal cords. Giant what? Giant legs. <laughs> Giant legs. That's not even going to make it to the outtakes. Oh, okay. Uh, and, we, and we lost Jeff and John. Oh, no. I was wondering why they were so quiet and then just disappeared. They were so quiet. And, it's because they were listening to us. We were, we were really compelling. Connected. We were really compelling. They were just like glued to the screen, not even yeah. moving. Yeah. And then connecting, nothing. Connecting. 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 Connecting, connecting. So, welcome outtakes. Connecting. Uh, Jeff and John are guests. They just disappeared because Remember we were talking that one about time? our podcast oh, finally. When we like, and... lost each other and <laughs> like all we can hear is you being like, well, gosh darn it. Yep, there we are. <laughs> and they're like, we're out of here. Yep. Oh, hi. Now the sad bit is. <laughs> no, we cannot hear team, anything right now. Which means they can't hear me. Because I, I think uh, Jeff's got to join in order for us to hear you. Which was in the I know. document they said. <laughs> this guy. This all language guy. Shake your head at me. <laughs> you just like uh, pull the internet cord out. Oh, these fools are talking about their podcast now. Let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, are we back? Nope. Oh, now I can hear you. Hey. Yeah, we should be. There we go. Yeah.
Yeah, it's unfortunately only the video is on my side. So when I joined, I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> yep. well, good. That means you, you can't you, hear all the crappy stuff we were saying about you. You were oh, reacting good. as if you were hearing me, though. Which is great. So, yeah, I'm just very it expressive like, about nothing. It looked like you could hear us, but we couldn't hear you. And yeah. so you're just like nodding along. So, so uh, I never turned off Audacity during all, all of that. Uh, That's good. I don't know. That's okay. good. Yeah, we didn't either. So, And I have no idea where we cut out. Uh, we cut out where we were just talking about our podcast. Yeah. Uh, no. Stuff and, that we'll probably cut anyway. So, And you were, cool. you were both glued to the screen until you disappeared out of the Zoom chat. Yeah. Yeah, it looked, you were listening very intently to yeah. us uh-huh. talk about. Uh, we were. Yeah. I saw that you had frozen. Oh. Yeah, because we we went into a full response about about uh, what our early days were like. So it makes sense. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll 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 see if we can make something work out. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what yeah. we can piece together. It'll for... be a nice little treat for the editor. Yeah, there'll be a part where I'll, where I'll be like, yeah. So we were all way too serious in the early days. Oh, I think the internet went out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's me talking and then Ryan being like, we lost them. Yep. <laughs> they were just like, stop talking about yourself. Yeah, yeah just send it to Tracy. Call it bonus content. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the easy bonus content. And <laughs> clean oh. for March. Oh, yeah, Ryan, I finally got your message about um, Martin and Lawrence. And, <laughs> and Martin Lawrence. And yeah. Martin and, uh, Lawrence, Martin. yeah. It was Lawrence and Martin in that Lawrence order. Lawrence and Martin, yeah. Yeah. And King Lawrence Kaiser, and, and I don't remember what else was in It there. was uh, Amelia's son's uh, alternate universe uh, version of Mario and Luigi. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was oh. Martin and Lawrence. Um, yeah. And they were, uh, they were battling against... They were electricians, I think. Yeah, they were electricians, not plumbers. <laughs> and yeah. they were battling against King Trouser. Mm-hmm. Um, it was fantastic. Yeah, so that's like coming to the feed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that so. had nothing to do with the game that we were actually trying to record. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was late That's in the right. day. It's a game His meds had worn off. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. What else can I close? Okay. Your mouth. I'm just trying to figure out. I have like 15 <laughs> things open because there's all these like resources and so on. So I wanted, I wanted to see if I can streamline it. Yeah. The answer may surprise you. <laughs> I thought you just said that my pants may surprise me and... I mean, they might. I'm wearing PJ. I mean, pants. maybe yeah. if king trouser. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I'm good again. Oh yeah, yeah. Waveforms in this new area. Hey, 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 hey! Nah, there's nothing for you in there. Nothing for you in there. Stop. Peggy. 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 Oh, but you're so cute. You're such a puppy. You're so cute, though. <laughs> you know, I can't even be mad because look at that face. Uh huh. And I don't even say that about my kids. They no. don't got cute faces anymore. Not cute faces. They're not babies anymore. They're they're kids now, and like. Mm. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> kids are fine, yeah. I guess. Kids are kids are fine. They're mm. like little people, and little people are. Eh. People are the worst. So it's like they're just like smaller <laughs> versions of a thing I already hate. So. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Um, yeah, my my studio is almost done. Yeah, it's the progress photos look awesome. Uh, yeah, it's wild. Uh, they finished all the drywall today. Nice. And they're going to come back tomorrow morning and they're going to mud it, mud it, mud it. I don't know what they call mud, that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mud it. And then uh, and then that's going to dry. And then this weekend we're going to paint. Mm-hmm. And then Monday... They're going to be here to do the flooring and put the door in. Wow. And then it's done. And the trim. Dang, that was like two weeks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we might even be done by Tuesday. So I can actually be in the office for the cold open for the the second episode of this series. Dang. Yeah. I'm flabbergasted. That's amazing. I know. Uh, so if my audio quality for this cold open uh, and the outtakes, uh, welcome up to the outtakes, everybody. Um, well, we're still in the other one for the outtakes. Oh, yeah. Unless cold That's open true. outtakes, I guess. But We're in cold open outtakes. I don't know that, like, it's, I don't think it's noticeable enough that, like, the average listener would know. Like, you'll see it when you're editing. You're going to be like, oh, there's no ways. And there's, you know, but, like, I don't think it comes out so much on, you know. Yeah. I was messing with my gain so much i have no idea how this is going to sound in post but whatever I'm sure it'll be fine it's just the open you know it's just the open it's fine 
It matters to me. I know, but I know. Everybody also knows that you're not in the studio, so it's okay. That's true. Okay. Thanks everybody for understanding. <laughs> we'll leave it there. All righty. Okay, can you not squeak the toy though while I'm doing my recording? Thank you. Don't squeak. Try no, to do right a podcast. <laughs> this is why we don't buy dogs the squeaky toys. No, she only likes the squeaky ones. Yes, thank you. That is a beautiful dino baby that you brought me. Thank you. Just Can a I have dino it? baby. Can I Just have a squeaky it? dino baby. Can I have it? Oh, thank you. Ah, uh, Peggy. I'm just gonna bark at me because I have it on the desk. Okay. Ah, uh, Peggy. You wanted to start. You want to start? You wanted to start. Wait, I'm starting? Okay. You were all like, I never get to say my game thoughts. And I was like, it's a back and forth. We both (laughs) say them. And you were like, but you always do it first. I meant meant in the last series specifically. Okay, but now I'm telling you, now it's your turn to do the game thoughts. You wanted it. You wanted it. I got it. Be careful what you wish for. All right. Hooray. Yay. Podcasting is fun. We did it. This is going to be our episode with with like the most amount of uh, dead air removed, I imagine. Yeah, editing silence out is going to take forever on this. Uh-huh. Flo- more like floating. Oh, language. Whoa. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Whoa. This is a show. Oh, language. <laughs> <laughs> this is a show? <laughs> we live in a society. Bow, 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 bow. Oh, wait, that's the Top Gun song. Never mind. What's the love song in Ghost? <laughs> All I'm thinking, whenever you, you, okay, you said the love song in Ghost, and the first thing my mind went to is um, I Will Always Love You uh, from The Bodyguard. Well. <laughs> and that's not right. It's uh, it's that one that goes, uh, my darling, I've hungered for your touch. What's yeah. that? Unchained Melody? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like one of the most unlistenable series for character creation. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. You're yeah. just going to have to put music stings between each person saying a random sentence. <laughs> It's the only way you'll get it to work. And because we're back. <laughs> R. But eh. you would think that R would be a pilot's favorite letter of the alphabet. But no, they are married to the C. The C. When I was in Boy Scouts, we went through that joke to almost every letter of the alphabet. <laughs> yeah. Pirate's favorite letter is O because he stabs someone. He enjoys the song. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, this is that kind of stuff. Pirate's favorite letter is M because they're delicious, because food is delicious. Mm. Mm. <laughs> this is that. For- Pirate's favorite letter is I, Captain. <laughs> yeah, Boy Scouts is dumb. Turns out. I, like, honestly, I think, like, kids are dumb. Like, their <laughs> jokes are not good. <laughs> Oh, I might just go to the ocean today. That's one of my many powers, you know. Going to the ocean. <laughs> the two of us could just leave our house right now and be at the ocean in 10 minutes. Yeah, but I hate the ocean <laughs> and all that dwell within it. <laughs> well, let me ask you this then. <laughs> Do you have any spare change? <laughs> A quarter. <laughs> He'll be at it for hours. Oh, man. Uh <laughs> I'm just sitting here reading all the people really mad about Chocobo GP. What? Oh, it's a kart racing game for Switch that was going to come out or <laughs> that came out a couple of days Final ago. Final Fantasy racing game? Final Fantasy racing game. It's the sequel to one that was on the PlayStation 1 a million years ago. <laughs> oh. Um, unfortunately, it's a $50 game that is a mobile game. Like, it's got every mobile microtransaction thing that is possible Ooh, in oh a $50 gosh. game. You have to $50 to play, start playing the game and then massive... Microtransactions, Mad, incredible amounts. All the where when you turn the game on, you immediately get the pop up that's like you know season Ugh. one unlock Cloud and Squall if you spend eight dollars now and then also fifteen dollars later. And if you play the battle pass to level sixty five, wow, wow. And I'm like, wow. it's a fifty dollar game. You should just give me Cloud. Yeah, 
That's wild. <laughs> the reason those things exist in other games is because they are free and then trying to milk you for money. Yeah. Yep. This is a double dip, and a lot of people are grumpy. <laughs> yep. Oh, wow. Wow. No, I just finished reading the, the joke about GP thing. Apparently, the in-game microtransaction currency that they give you for, like, winning races and stuff expires. Oh, my God. To stop wow. you from save, to try to stop you from trying to save it. They it, it basically like all you can really unlock is a coupon that lasts a while for the real money you have to spend. Whoa. Wow, man, this is just amazingly bad. Yeah, bad, bad time to launch. All right. And before we hit stop on our recordings. Uh, we wanted to plug Jeff's thing and reinsert that at oh. the beginning. Stormer. Oh, Jeff Stormer. Yes. Oh, my book? Okay. Jeff Stormer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, yeah. All right, hang on. Let me get to the Slack channel about that. All right. Now we can, now we can press stop for this portion of the recording. Three and a oh, half man. hours. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, yeah. First, recorded waveforms in my new studio. Oh my god, your new studio makes you sound like a robot! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Back to the drawing board. Tear it down. Tear it down. Oh, I am peeking like nobody's business. Taken out of context. Brian, this is a family friendly <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't capture genuine laughter uh, <laughs> when I was testing it. So how do I know if I wasn't peeking? Ha ha ha! <laughs> 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 that was it. Ha 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 ha! ha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. I like peeked way up. Ha 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 ha! <laughs> all right, all right. I think I think we're officially at the uh, peakless point on my input level. If it's peakless, does that mean it's smooth? It's smooth. 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 It is not the jagged waveform. Smooth waveform. The waveform. The waveform sound like my ball. A little rough. <laughs> But smooth and blue. It can't be rough and smooth. <laughs> rough is the opposite of smooth. <laughs> well, it's like it's like rough on a like macro level, but on a micro level, nice and smooth. Yeah, for sure. That's science. Science. All right. Well, I've got waveforms. They are blue, uh, just okay. like my walls. Okay. Um, but not. What color yeah. are your walls, Ryan? Waveform blue? No. Gosh. I would call them Audacity Waveform Blue. Oh, it would be the worst. It would be so bright. <laughs> there might be a shade in there or two, but no, it's uh the, the the actual name of the color is Oceania. 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 Okay. Uh, and it's very ocean like. It's uh it's a nice deep blue with a, yeah. a gray undertone and a little bit of green mm -hmm. um and i've got everything set up i got my nice uh, uh art behind me of uh my oc for my in-person game group and uh my character creation cast banner on a chair because yeah, i was gonna say it's not like up yet i, I have to i have to wait for my uh, my fancy soundproofing panels mm -hmm. get rid of this reverb that most people won't be able to hear because I'm nobody can hear but it. you like even here like I I notice it a little bit because I'm listening for it but yeah. like it's not enough that like if I were a casual listener I'd be like oh my god that guy's got a lot of reverb well look at that reverb oh, I just say like goodness. I am <laughs> really picky <laughs> sit further from your microphone <laughs> turn down your gain <laughs> <laughs> Even when Nate's like watching Twitch streams too, I was like, dude, you're yeah. blowing out your mic back up. <laughs> stop, uh. stop peeking your way for it. Oh my God. <laughs> Turned on your game, And then game, Nate rolls his eyes bro. at me because I'm like, sick gain, bro. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, podcast. Podcast. Okay. I will do a five count and then we will go. Oh, fashion. 
Uh, somebody so, just turned off the light. Yeah, I see that. You're like in the dark there. <laughs> well, it was turning off my lights. I got Wi-Fi lights. So like people are able to just turn things off. Oh, I me. didn't know if they were like, uh, you know, like motion. You were like not moving enough no. there. Oh. <laughs> no, it's, it's all, it's all Wi-Fi, baby. <laughs> I uh, when uh, or the bleh. okay mm -hmm. yeah exactly <laughs> uh all right I will do the recap real quick I need a drink of water I'm like super thirsty lately delicious mm, water mm, water it's so <laughs> moist it's so moist and everybody lubricating. gets so upset about the word moist I'm gonna get this out this is recorded everyone can hear it. Everyone gets so upset about the word moist. Yeah. And no one talks about the word soggy. I agree. Because I propose that soggy is worse than moist because so soggy implies something that should not be wet and is. Mm -hmm. Whereas moist could be something that like, like a cake is moist. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's supposed to be like that. A yep. soggy cake? No. I right? think like, like the only thing that can be soggy and fine is a sponge. Even then, though, you're kind of like, it's like, eh. it like is you, kind you of just like, want to like wring it out, you know? Yeah, squishy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's nothing, there's so nothing that little, I'm like, ooh, it's soggy. It's a little that's, too wet. That's pleasing. I don't know. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> One time I did forget the word moist, though, and I was trying to describe a cake to my ex-husband, mm -hmm. and he like makes fun of me for this still, um, that I was like, you know, it was just like really like... I don't want to say juicy. <laughs> He's like, no, wrong. Not, no. Not okay. Juicy, also another really great word, but not uh, in certain contexts. Right, not for cake. Uh, not for cake. I moist just like cake, moist. Good. Moist cake, Soggy good. cake, bad. Juicy exactly. cake, bad. Cake, really bad. Really, Honestly, really bad. soggy cake is an accident. Juicy <laughs> cake is just an that abomination. Was intentional. That was an intentional abomination. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you have questions about uh, this yeah, and the have outtakes, any questions about cake, uh, <laughs> 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 questions.charactercreationcast.com. Yep. Enjoy mm -hmm. outtakes. Yep. Ah, <laughs> uh, boy. It took everything not in me to not interrupt and be like, and another changeling, and, and another, another changeling, changeling, and another changeling. Five characters. <laughs> oh, boy. We did it. We did it. It only took 24 minutes. There we go. All right. Oh, waveforms. Look at those waveforms. Everybody loves a good old-fashioned waveform. Well, not me. I hate waveforms. <laughs> like it says on my I hate waveform shirt. Oh, wait, this is the Avengers. <laughs> I mean, mine is truly accurate as it is born hungry. Um, it would have to be a Transformers shirt at that point, right? Oh, no, wait, that's sound wave, not waveform. <laughs> yeah, I mean, waveform should be a Transformer. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. Oh, exactly. Waveform, son of sound Maybe wave. A, uh, <laughs> there might be a, an Autobot that turns into a tape player as well. Oh, I probably. Think. I feel like there is. One thing I keep hoping is that as the generations of Transformers continue to come out, that Soundwave never changes from being a cassette player. Yeah. Right? He's just always playing. Eventually, it's not going <laughs> like, to make any sense. Look, I turned into a boombox, and I'm done. Yeah, I picked cassette player. It's not my fault. Your, cut, your planet is evolving rapidly on tech fronts. <laughs> you got, Tapes are coming around again. Is it, though? No. Well, it doesn't matter, because he's like... <laughs> I'm a robot. Yeah, his tapes aren't even tapes. They turn into like little vultures and I stuff. Because I mean, yeah. like vinyl appears to be like kind of eternal at this point for some reason. But How come there isn't a vinyl transformer then? When it turns exactly. into a cool record player. Oh, because then it would just be skipping all the time when he's moving around. Plus he'd be an insufferable hipster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to buy a CD player last week because my kids went to the library to check out audiobooks and they come on CD and we're like, we don't have a CD player. Like nothing plays CDs anymore. <laughs> It's true. All my computers don't have any kind of drive now. No, I will. Yeah, and both my too. kids have Chromebooks for school. So it's like, yeah. those don't do anything. Yeah. Mm. I don't have any drive either. <laughs> yeah. No, I know you don't. You were born hungry. Born hungry. Oh. That's my best shirt. I love this shirt. It makes me happy. 
All right, let's do this. All right. I'm I'll do a five count and then we will <laughs> born hungry. Get going. <laughs> Amazing. It's such a, I see I wore my Spider-Man shirt because it's my one like Marvel shirt, like the Spider-Man Da Vinci. Nice, nice. I'm one eighth Spider-Man. There you go. Or whatever. On my mother's is. side. I don't know. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's seven. There's eight, eight, eight Avenger types on there. Yeah, except for one of them is Ghost Rider, who is not an Avenger. I think he's been an Avenger. Everyone's been an Avenger. <laughs> yeah, that's all this is. <laughs> it's all that matters. I mean, Spider-Man's fairly rarely an Avenger himself. I mean, he's part of the new Avengers. He is a core founding member of the new Avengers. When the new is Avengers. Nicolas Cage going to be in the MCU? That's uh, all I care about. Probably sooner than you think, but probably not in a role that it's going to be. He'll be he'll be like a villain who's Better just be a Ghost Rider. Rider. Oh, he'll yeah. he'll not take be Ghost the place Rider of again. the Ghost Rider that's on a horse <laughs> from his movie. There you go, the Sam Elliott Ghost Rider. Yeah, I know there was already a Ghost Rider in the in the MCU technically through the TV series. Yeah, but Agents that doesn't Shield count. count. Shield doesn't. No well, I thought she, I thought Shield was canon. For no, Agents it was, it was a Shield one way. Be. It was a one way flow. It could it could pretend it was part of the MCU, but the MCU was never going to pretend that Agents of Shield was a part of it. And the last season of Agents of Shield basically went, Nah, J.K. We don't exist. Yeah, they went on their own little world tangent. They did a time travel thing, yeah. so now they're like, Yeah, we wrote ourselves out did of existence. Did I even yeah. finish the series? I don't think I did, but I know I I know I I got to that time travel nonsense and the end of the world sort of thing but either yeah, way like uh i think i think uh agent carter is the only one of those shows that was actually canon I interesting because like yeah. the the butler from it showed up in endgame oh yeah that's right mm -hmm. there you have it all right marvel okay, so i'm gonna do a five count and then we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> okay. we're te technically we were on topic a little bit okay mm -hmm. Ooh, time. I was four when this game was released. I was not born yet. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, at least I was four for the first version of this game. Yeah. That's something. I was two. I nice. was a wee baby. <laughs> you were a wee baby. You were born hungry. <laughs> I was born hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, we can stop our recording. Oh, yeah. Right. I can do that. <laughs> I'm just sitting here looking at this book. I haven't really flipped through it yet. Oh. Oh, it is awesome. It's, I mean, it's the least healthy thing you could possibly make. It's <laughs> yeah. Clicky. Hey. I did it. Hey, Clicky. Hey, Clicky. I did, I, I did some temporary um, adjustments to my studio. Mm -hmm. um, I have a large blanket up on one of the walls. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I literally put a rolled up rug in the corner of the wall and mm -hmm. and then draped a blanket from that to an iron name board nice um and and that got rid of i'd say about half my reverb okay just with that and then like uh you know some other stuff that's going on over here i keep thinking about like how can i like drape something nicely in this corner here like how can yeah. i like you know like to make it not look like garbage though because it's you know because i have to look at it all day. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I haven't really. Oh, you could you could do like one of those tent things where it's like a, a pole up in the corner and mm -hmm. then and then it could drape down to to some other supports along either side of the wall. And then you would have this like like, like little... a little canopy over my desk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That would feel I like a little that... office princess. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it would look pretty sweet, I think. I don't know. It would have to be a thick enough blanket. Well, but like, I mean, there's that. And then there's also the fact that like right here is the closet door. So like there's not really room for anything to like go on the side of this, this side of the desk. Yeah, fair enough. there's a door right there that like right. the desk bumps right up again. Like the door can't even close all the way because the desk is right there. Yeah. It's just like a hair too big. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah. you, you could also have a, a princess desk. So I could. I have like a bulletin board and stuff right here. And I've got like stuff up on the wall here to kind yeah. of, you know make it a little less but it's just that corner yeah so just a little princess tree mm -hmm. yeah might as well yeah i mean i almost like just it's like it would be better if i just like turned this way and didn't talk into the corner probably but it's fine that's it's where not the desk that is. It's, it's not that bad it's where the desk is so it is it's true <laughs> okay uh well well uh I'm at the very have... least um my panels will be here before the next recording that's exciting. 
and uh, I'm very excited about that. And then I just have work to do to get them on the walls. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I shall post pictures um, everywhere because uh, it's been a long time coming. Yeah. Yeah. Very We've cool. worked hard for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, cold open. I feel low on energy today, but yeah, like me too. Um, I don't know where it's coming from, but like, I just feel like mellow, or mellow than normal. Yeah, I just feel so, kind of like no. So it might be a might be a more low energy cold open. So I mean, if that's the case, uh, we yeah, apologize. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fairly short. It's not too bad. So it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, See yeah, last time we were like we were really kind of slap, slap happy though. So that's true. Maybe know. we'll have Maybe less this is like a normal, like yeah. professional level. I mean, let's not get too crazy. But I, 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 I'm, I hesitate I'm to doubtful. say professional, but <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I hesitate to call it good. <laughs> now wait a minute, Amelia. We're not that good. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I got carried away. <laughs> Heat of the moment. Uh -huh. Uh huh. That's yeah, all good. All right. Shall we? Shall we record a cold open? We shall have lubricated my mouth. Oh, excellent <laughs> reminder. Um, I shall also lubricate the vocal cords with mm -hmm. uh, the aqua. Yes, yeah, so if we could just like moisten. Mm. Get that mouth good and soggy. My my, my <laughs> <laughs> nice, uh, nice juicy with mouth. A good juicy mouth. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> uh, yep. Yep. Can't wait for that to be in the outtakes. That's, um, I think my game might be too. <laughs> I don't know. Or you I just shouted about juicy mouths. Uh, juicy Either mouths. Way. Yep. I'm peeking too much because I'm talking about juicy mouths. Mm hmm. We've all been there. <laughs> Welcome, outtakes. Uh, we apologize for nothing. Nope. Not a bit. <laughs> All right, looks like I'm starting the show, so uh, I'll give us a countdown, and we'll go from there. Okay. Here we go. Two seconds. My dog is chewing on something, and I don't know what it is or if it's a thing she's supposed to be chewing. Sure. Peggy's. Peggy. 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 Stop chewing on stuff you're not supposed to chew on. You put a cardboard box? So exciting. That's so exciting for you. Cardboard. Yeah. Little tail. Just have the best puppy life. Get to destroy cardboard whenever you want. God, little cardboard Peggy. Pretty great. <laughs> and I'm like not strong enough to turn it. You'd like a okay. like a wrench or something for that thing. Well, it's yeah. I mean, it's like a little knob. But like, Just a little bit, a little bit more torque. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get those sick gains. Sick, sick gains, bro. Sick gains. Okay. <laughs> Editor James, cut that. <laughs> <laughs> Editor James. Editor James. <laughs> I can't even put that in the outtakes. <sighs> oh, you audience will never know what we were just talking about. Nope. Nope. Secret. <laughs> secret. 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 Got a secret. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Huzzah. We did it. Hey. That was our recording. We Another recorded some stuff. Talking to a microphone. With our juicy mouths. Juicy mouths.